All right, folks, let's call this meeting to order. Uh, step one here is determining a quorum. Uh, we have all five members here today. Uh, quorum uh, requires four votes. Um, it's not a simple majority because we are supposed to have seven members on the board, so everybody understands that when we come to voting on things. Uh, any adjustments to the agenda? Assuming no. Uh, three is citizen comments. I assume everybody's here for the two applications that are in front of us. Uh, if anyone has comments related to anything else, this will be the time. Okay. Can I make a quick yes. Um, we live on Lynn Street. What's your name, please? Holly McMurray. And um, the snowplow guy ripped up a corner there. It's huge, you know, how it's a black berm that curves around. And all of the black berm pieces came up and they pumped. This was at least two months ago. And I don't know whether he hit a hole, this big electric telephone, whatever hole there. And a wire, black wire, fell down from that, was hanging. And then over the course of the three months, it wound up putting on the ground. And so we were very concerned about that, but no one seemed to do anything. I called the electric company and the phone company, and they both came out to check. But they said it's, it's not the electric company said it's not us, and the phone company said it's not you know anything yeah. dangerous. So they wound it up. Okay. But it's and still on. Oh, is it? Yeah. It was on the thing this morning. I'm sure it all fell up again. So I'm concerned that the town never the the plow guy was a little bit crazy. Because there was a lot of damage done to curbs, gardens, you know, yeah. sidewalk gardens, etc. I mean, a lot. And no one said anything. And so I thought it would be a good thing to bring it up here. Because something could have been done. He could have known. He, he oh, had, I, I witnessed it, okay? He actually started I live doing this on Glidden Street as well. He, first of all, doesn't know how to drive a plow truck. I was married to a landscaper for 20 years. This um, is have you talked to the town office already? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm not, not a, 100% no, sure this is a, um, a great use of everybody's oh, time here. Said. But you did bring it up, and I'm sure it will, Max, you I can repeat it. I can repeat it to Julie for tomorrow. Yeah. I can repeat it to Julie tomorrow. Yeah. Have you contacted Public Works about the damage to the curves? Pictures, uh, you know, the whole bit. Okay. I happen to have some gorgeous photos of it. It's been a tough winter for plowing because there's been no this, freezing. This, we've had a guy going on in neighborhood for years, and he's he was absolutely terrific. He never had a problem. And this guy did not know what he was doing. Okay, but we need to get, we have a big speed thing ahead of us. Yep. Can we move yep. ahead? Thank, thank you for bringing that up. We can count some of the time and talk about it in more detail, but I figured you could the maybe. It, it's, it's sitting there. There's really not much that the planning board can do about this, aside from refer you to the folks in town that are supposed to handle it. Yeah, for just the sake of this, Barbara, I think you were just saying it, and then Brendan, you were about to, but... This would be something to probably bring up at a select board meeting instead they would handle that this is just going over the ordinance items for the two applications that are before the planning board today okay there's no other comments uh let's start in on 926 main street hop out here yep okay Um, so I assume that you're here mostly to talk about the parking. I, that's what I assumed as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. And when, when we were here, I think it was in February, that seemed like the, the major concern. Yes. And I think we have some people from the neighborhood who are here uh, as well to yeah. talk about that. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so we don't have a complete application here. You haven't done the the stuff on the renovation inside the building. So what is it that you're looking for from us exactly? Wait, just wait, wanted wait, to well, wait, 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 site plan approval. Yeah. Not no, not building approval, site plan approval. Yeah. We don't okay. have anything to do with the renovations. Okay. Yeah, we have a separate permit that we've already pulled for yeah. interior reno okay. renovations. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're just looking for approval to uh, operate a five-room uh bed and breakfast. 
uh, I believe the site plan and all the correct documents were submitted. We also submitted uh, a letter from the library. Um, uh, we have a, a lease out to them, but they've agreed to rent us off street parking for overnight guests at the bed and breakfast. So we'll have five um, dedicated off street parking spaces there. Um, and I believe that I submitted to Max a letter of intent from them saying that they will rent us those spaces. And you're also applying for the wine bar. For the wine bar, yep. Which um, we, the, our, our plan suggests, which came up in the, um, the meeting here in February, that we would direct guests to public parking on Glidden um, and parking on Main Street. And none of that parking, obviously, would be overnight parking. Quick question for you. On the... 9.3.3.3.9, okay. member required. The five spaces required for the bed and breakfast will be provided off-site. Then it goes on to say there's 11 public spaces on Main Street, four public spaces. The hope is that 22 public spaces will be acceptable. What's the metric, Max? I don't know if I should ask you. What's the metric for determining what is a parking space? Does someone go out and measure 11 feet or how does that work? Uh, there is a, there is a metric. Did, is that, did you fill that out? Do you have an answer for that? Yes, I, I did fill that out. And in terms of the public parking spaces, I used right. Google Earth to see what was stripes. And unfortunately it was been paved. And so a lot of striping hasn't been redone that right. should have been redone. So there's a, there's a uniform town. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like eight and a half or nine feet wide by I think 18 or 20 feet. Long. Okay. And that's how you get that. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. yeah. If I can jump in, uh, those measurements can be found on page nine dash thirteen in the ordinance. What happens on the parking lot on Glidden Street is pulled from uh, events at the theater, as they are as it is now. And we have acting classes or concert or yeah, uh, yeah. My understanding is that when they have events there, their parking spills out all over the town. I've heard the same thing about the um, the uh, uh, funeral hall across the street. Um, I don't, I we're not providing parking for them, so I don't know what happens. No, I mean, what are you going to do if you should be showing the town like you're going to use the Golden Street parking lot? So there's also the cocoon lots down the hill we can direct guests to, which there's, I think there's a, a bunch more parking there. Um, that doesn't get used. Can we uh, can we keep this uh, on track here? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's going to be a time for public comment later. We usually we let the applicant speak first, just go over the general synopsis of the application, then we'll go through the uh, site plan article by article, and the parking will be under Article Nine. If that's where everyone's curious. Okay, so let's start in on Section Three and just run through our checklist here. Um. I don't recall what we went through in, on the previous uh, application, so I'm just going to go through everything here. Uh, conflicts of interest. I don't believe that we've had we have any uh, applicant has standing. I believe that we have already established that as well on the previous application. Um, is the application complete? That's we, we will go through. Yes, we will discover that as we go. And findings of fact. Is there findings of fact on this yet? Um, yes. I have a draft findings of fact that I can read out if people would like. And that will also go over the uh, the standing. Uh, the Town of Walterboro Planning Board has considered the following application for 926 Main Street, Map U4, Lot 126, including supportive data, staff review comments, public hearing testimony, and related material contained in the record. These are the following findings of facts. Project description, the applicant has proposed to change the use of the structure to a bed and breakfast as defined in the Walderboro Land Use Ordinance on page 15-3 and a wine bar, which falls under the definition of a cafe slash deli on page 15-6. The planning board is authorized to review the proposed uses. The applicant slash owner, the applicants are Alexa Stark and Nathan, I'm sorry if I mispronounced Reimer. Reimer. Yeah. I, I, it's I, a weird one, yeah. My last name, that always happens too. <laughs> Who are being represented by Chuck Campbell. The owner is 926 Main Street, LLC. The property under consideration is 926 Main Street, map U4, lot 126. The lot has a total acreage of 0 0.31 acres according to the Waldeboro's tax assessor's agent. The lot is in the historic village district. The current land use is the single family dwelling. 
and the proposed land use is five room bed and breakfast and a wine bar. There are no exterior developments proposed. There are no previous permits for the site prior to the application. The town planner deemed the application ready for planning board review with the applicant submitting the following. One, a town wall of our site plan review cover sheet. Two, a copy of the deed for the property. Three, an eight page summary of standards and articles. Three, seven, eight, nine, and 10. That was a typo on my end. Four, a site map by Chuck Campbell. Five, a copy of the Waldorf tax map. Six, a map showing nearby public parking spaces that are visibly marked. Seven, a written statement from the Waldorf Public Library stating their intent to lease five parking spaces for at least one year. And we are now here for the public hearing. Those are the findings of this. Okay. All right. Top line here, 3.3.6, uh, waiver of the requirement to do a boundary survey. Uh, the note here is this is an existing lot with an existing structure and no site improvement is desired. Uh, I think that's a reasonable waiver to request. Can I ask a question? Sure. How was this determined, Chuck, on your plan? I used the survey that was done for the Waldo here. Uh, so dated when was that about a couple of weeks ago they did another one i mean was it in the last 10 years when was that one i'm not sure i need on the form that i on the form that i have because i don't have the whole i don't know we don't either so i was curious where it came from and if you know i do uh, i'm going to check an email too because i might have uh a date on that the other point for that survey is that it is included. And we thank you for that. Uh, it's not really necessary to have one unless it's something that's requested by the code enforcement officer, or town planner, or the planning board. So unless you need an updated one. Uh, no, and you didn't find any pins or anything, Chuck? No. no, no. no. I, was, I was just curious where it came from. If it's sort of just passing on no, Xerox I, pieces of paper and assuming that I, I, had, I okay. had a copy of the survey that was done for uh, the wall of. No, and that's what I use. Okay. The theater just had another one done. Excuse me, you you really have to wait. We have so much to go through. We've got pages and pages to go through. Could you, just could you wait to the yeah. end? We get through all this stuff, and then we can bring up your comments. But we may answer your questions along the way. All right. Uh, section three point five point one. Um. Some of this stuff, Max, sounds like you have, but it wasn't included in the packet that you gave us. Um, no, that was for the 80 grade one. Chuck does go through 3.5.1 and 3.5.2. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at the 3.5.1.5 uh, verification on ownership. I didn't see a copy of the deed in the packet. Yeah. Did I not think that? That might have been my mistake. I can go get a copy of the deed in the back. <laughs> okay. Um, estimated cost of construction, $600,000 for the uh, application here. Descriptional project. So this is entirely an interior renovation. Yes, except for paint. paint yeah, okay. Um, I've got a note on something later on, but uh, we'll get there eventually. Um, okay. Anticipated start and completion, starting as soon as possible, ending June twenty twenty four. You know, plumbing per permit, fire marshal construction permit. Um, and you've submitted a site map. So assuming that uh, Max comes back here with the uh, deed, looks like there's no, nothing uh, in 3.5.1 that is not met. Well, the other thing would be serving uh, a license for the wine bar. 
We yeah, so state approval for that, right? Yeah, and we uh, we can't um, apply for that until we have approval from the town. So once we have approval from you guys, then we'll submit for the state license to uh, serve wine and beer. And it's the, the specific license is, uh, there's all different kinds of liquor licenses. This one's specific to a bed and breakfast. So without our approval to operate as a bed and breakfast, we can't uh, apply with the state. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. yeah. It's wine, beer, and uh, no spirits, or is that a separate entity? Uh, we're just intending to serve wine and beer. Uh, and, I, and I believe that the license is for those things specifically not, it will not include part of the Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's move on to uh, 3.5.2, the documents for planning board review. Uh, we have a site plan here, which does have a title block. Names of engineers. Chuck, this is all your work here. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, we have our planning board approval block. We have a revision block, conditions of approval block. Oh, off here, but I think we can live without it. The building structure drawings. We have a plan view of the existing building. All right, estimated peak hour of traffic, 3.5.2.7. Thank you. All right, 3.5.2.7 asks for an estimate of the peak hour and average daily traffic to be generated by the project and evidence additional traffic can be safely handled on the adjacent streets. Um, so I don't think your construction impacts are going to be very great uh, from this project because it's all an interior renovation. Um, I assume you're going to have a dumpster on site at some point. Uh, yeah, when when required, we we had one at the beginning of the project. Uh, there was water damage to existing walls that we demoed out, had a dumpster, and then had it home. And that will probably happen at several other times. I assume you have room on site to put a dumpster. It doesn't have to we go do. in the street. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Other than that, I don't know what significant traffic impacts you could expect from that project. Uh, section eight, 3.5.2.8, site map prepared by a professional engineer or architect, focus on architects. Uh, stormwater and erosion control plans. Uh, there is a waiver requested on that, I assume. It's not on the uh, application. 3.5.2.9. I assume that the uh, the idea is that you're doing no construction right. on the site, so right. no erosion control required. That's correct. Uh, the technical and financial capacity. I don't have a note in here from from you on that. Um, Max, is that something that was possibly also submitted and not uh, didn't make it into the packet? Um, I don't think I had a written statement um, for the technical capacity. Uh, Chuck's always done a lot of good work in town. And uh, I, I don't know if you two can talk about the technical and financial capacity. I'm sorry. Oh, the technical capacity. I, I mean, I am a licensed architect, so you understand. In terms of financial capacity, I, I can't answer that because. They, uh, sure, I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect that you would. But uh, what? It, what? It, I don't know if I can address it or not. But I'm not sure what that. Questions asking. Uh, it just asks uh, for the applicant to indicate the technical and financial capacity of the applicant to undertake and complete the proposed activity. Oh, it, what? Like, do we have the resources to do what we're saying we're going to do? Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, 
Max, traditionally, what is our threshold for uh, providing a documentation for this? For technical and financial capacity? Yeah. Um, it, like always, it's always a planning board item. Uh, it could be just a letter from the bank saying these people have done great work with us and they certainly have the capacity. It could just be a statement from them saying we do have the financial capacity and it's it's always depending on the project size. You know, if someone's just making a deck, we're not expecting them to have a million dollar right. in the bank. And given that it's an interior renovation, right. uh, probably has little life safety uh, impacts for the community. I don't know how important that is. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, contour lines on the map. I don't know if that was there. Um, and fire protection provisions. Uh, Per ordinance requirements. Um, just handed out the letter from yes. the fire chief. We have a letter from the fire chief saying that the lot is serviced by municipal water and does not need additional measures, not recommending a Knox box. So I think that we are all set on that. So actually, if I can step in for a second. Yeah. Um, has anybody contacted EMS about an Oxbox? Rather, they are going to need something for access for EMS purposes. If somebody gets sick at night, is the building locked down? Are they not able to access that in order to get to a patient? Um, that's a good question. So um, the way that the locks will work is guests will um, be given access through a PIN code which if, uh, if emergency services needed access, we could give them a pin so that they would have 24 access to the building. Um, that, as long as they had some way of accessing it in case of an emergency, that, that would be the only thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'd be the easiest thing to do for us to just have a dedicated pin. We can set multiple pins for the doors and we can give a dedicated pin to whatever emergency services needed it. Okay, so on 3.5.1 and 3.5.2, um, going back to the verification on ownership, Max has handed me a copy of the deed to the building to confirm that. So I think that, uh, whoops, we need, a waiver for uh, 3.5.2.11 for the contour lines on the map and for 3.5.2.9 for the stormwater and erosion control plans. So do we have a motion to approve those with those two waivers? Should we do it piecemeal like that or do it at the end? Yeah. Usually what we've been doing in the past, uh, we go through an article by article just to verify, and then the vote is more confirming that the article is complete. Okay. And then there's going to be one big final vote at the end. Okay. okay. Hey, just uh, just make motion that we well, mark one, one moment. Um, Max, I didn't get anything um, on the 3.5.2 stuff. I don't know if I got an old list that, that wasn't updated. And also the only letter that I got in my packet uh, came from the library. I did not receive a copy of anything from the fire chief as well. So I'm not sure what he was is he just talking about the Knox box or was he also referring to any fire standards as well? Underneath the agenda. Thanks. Yeah, so um, uh, I don't know about 3.5.2. That's mostly the uh, site plan document that should have come with your packet, uh, AS1. Um, so I don't know if you didn't get any of that. Um, 
I handed it to you, so I'm not sure. It's the big site map. That's the, sort of the survey. Uh, Mark, I think the confusion might be that in Chuck's letter, uh, he did not detail any of the information oh. about 3.5.2. Right. right. And I believe that the the letter from uh, the fire chief came after the packets were distributed to us. Is that correct? Yeah, I got the letter from the chief uh, very recently, and I wasn't able to send it out before the meeting. But uh, just very quickly, Mark, I'll read it for you and for the record. 7.12.1, and we're going to get to this later. A lot is serviced by municipal water and does not need additional measures. 7.12.2, which is about accessibility. They're not recommending the lockbox just because there's an owner who intends to live on the parcel or someone doesn't intend to live on the parcel. And well, as Nathan just mentioned, he can give the pin code as well if it's needed for EMS. And there were some additional thoughts from the chief. Uh, the owner should be aware of the state fire marshal and building code regulations for installing a sprinkler system. Which we are aware of. Yeah. That was uh, Chief Smelter's whole letter. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. It, um, yeah. We've already talked about uh, fire codes and stuff, so we should be good on that. All right. So, Article 7. We were going to vote. Yeah. Oh, I thought that we just decided we weren't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you could do a quick motion just to decide on Section 3.5 uh, that it is complete with the two waivers that. Uh, Brendan mentioned. I make a motion that we do exactly what Max just said. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one of you will make that long motion. <laughs> we need a second, I think. I'll second that. Barbara made the motion and Jeff seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Mark. Mark. That was all five. Okay. Section seven. Article seven. Pardon me. All right. Buffer areas. So article seven is about uh, providing buffer areas uh, between uh, industrial and commercial buildings uh between those buildings and residential use and my understanding from the application is that there is no additional buffer work that is intended as part of this project is that correct right okay we have some uh some na's here on uh protecting water bodies and the route one buffer Incompatible uses, 7.1.2.4. All right, I think that one is also requesting an NA. Visual impacts, nothing is really changing on the exterior of the building. We just have a basically a not applicable request on all of 7.1.2. Question on that. So you're not planning to do anything major to the facade of that building? Nothing is going to be? No. I mean, uh, uh, no. It's it, beautiful. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, 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 nothing other than maintenance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, it needs to be repainted. Uh, or parts of it need to be repainted. Right. Uh, You're going to repaint it with the idea of how it was maybe 50 years ago or just... It, 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 I, uh, we've looked at a bunch of historical photographs. It's always been white with green or black trim, and that's what we're going to... That's what I we'll see. maintain. Okay. Uh, we're not changing the footprint of it all. We're not going higher. We're not... Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh Moving along, 7.1.3 and 7.1.4 are also listed here as not applicable because there are no changes being made to the landscaping. 
7.1.5. Lighting. There you go. Well, this uh, does not actually specifically refer to lighting. Wait, 7.1.5 or 7.7? 7 .7. Oh, oh, sorry, 7.7. .7. Oh, okay. Did I just skip ahead of page? Yeah. That's what uh, I did. And oh, no wonder I'm confused. All right, yeah. they both say 7.1.5. <laughs> All right. Uh, 7.2 construction standards. Everything is intended to be built to code. Uh, under 7.4, you stated uh, an NA under the historic village district. And I assume that the intent here is because you're making no changes to the exterior of the building. That's, that's correct. Okay. I mean, we're, we're, not, we're not building anything. So there's really any, isn't anything for you to review. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, historical reference I don't think that's an issue here there's no changes to the exterior same for the rest of 7.4 which is all about the exterior of the building and the historic district all right 7.5 is the net developable acreage calculation which again I assume is and not applicable. All right, 7.6, noise. So I know that this is a concern for folks in the neighborhood. The note here in the application says that the development will be compliant with the noise levels in the ordinance. Um, Can I ask a question about that? Do we have a, um, given the size of the potential wine bar, do we have a sense of the capacity of the wine bar, people-wise? Um, give me half a moment. And there is a um, really plan to be outdoor seating. There'll be, the um, there'll, there'll be some benches and seats outside. Um, I, I think that the um, capacity is dictated by the interior space, which is really what the wine bar will be. The grounds will also be used by uh, B&B guests, so there will be places to sit, like outside furniture and things like that. Didn't you um, come to the pre-app with some hours of operation in mind? I don't see it on this. Yeah, uh, four to 10 is our intended hours of operation. Question, quick question. Um, I may have asked this, but I forgot. Is there going to be any entertainment, any outdoor, like music, bands, anybody? No, nope, like we're relying on the, the theater that? next door for that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, we won't, we won't be doing live music. Um, we, we have talked about doing, um, um, no, there wouldn't be, there wouldn't be any live music or entertainment or anything. No, no inside or outside. No, I mean, we'll, we'll probably have a, uh, stereo inside and play, you know, play music inside like you would. Okay. At a, uh, but it's, you know, again, it's, we're serving wine and beer, not, you know, it's not like a open till 2 a.m. Right. Party bar. It's, you know, there'll be some nice music on to create some audience. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing there, Chuck? I'm looking for memory and that's never good. <laughs> Well, you can go on and you can answer that. Yeah. Um, but I hope you come back. It would, it would be interesting to know the answer to that question. Um, I don't think, uh, specifically relating to complying with this, I don't think that, that there's any reason to think that the, uh, uh, the sound levels produced by the activities that you're describing are going to violate the, uh, the noise ordinance. Um, so I think we can move on from. 7.6, right, 7.7, lighting. Um, the note here is that all lighting shall be shielded. And the question that I had about this was, uh, 
Farther down in here, 7.7.1.4, you noted that exterior lighting except security lighting will be turned off between 11 and 6. Uh, I didn't see any lighting shown in the drawings, and I'm wondering uh, what that lighting is going to consist of. There's uh, existing lighting on the building. We're not adding anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, refuse disposal. Solid and liquid waste will be disposed off property on a weekly basis. There will not be any industrial or chemical waste. Um, how is that managed? Is that shown on your site plan here? You have a dumpster on site or is it just trash cans or how's that going to work? Uh, well, we're, I think it'll just be trash cans inside and then a third party pick up once a week. Yeah. Okay. You're not expecting to have a dumpster on site. For we're not, we're not expecting to generate a ton of trash. I mean, it'll be yeah. reusable glasses. So we'll have recycling probably more than anything else. We'll have, uh, you know, empty sense. bottles and cans um, that we'll, we'll bag up. So we have quite a bit of inside space where that can be stored. And then um, it'll be picked up weekly. And if we have to, we can put it in a truck and grab it somewhere. Okay. All right. Sanitary provisions. Uh, this is all about providing additional uh, adequate sewage. Do we have a, a letter from our <clears throat> utility district about that in this package, Matt? Uh, or, Max? I had one, but maybe I didn't hand it out to everybody. Oops, school Street. School Street. Oh. I know I have it. I just need to go through all these papers. Yeah, there's no issues, right? In this town sewer, that's there's no red flags. And okay. now the letter I saw is very similar to what you have for the Volunteers of America one. Where uh, Gordon Webster's saying, where Gordon Webster's saying that the capacity can handle it. I just need to find the one for this project. That might just be in my office, but I'll I'll have it before you have a final vote. The the intent here is to continue to use the existing yes. sewer connection right. to the street. Yeah. 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 All right, 7.10 signs uh, says any proposed sign will be in compliance with section 7.10. Uh, are you intending to apply for a sign for this? I, I, I think we probably will at some point. I don't know if it'll be immediately or further down the line, but mm. uh, I, I think our intention is at some point to have a sign on Main Street. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Just to help people find where they're going and get to the right place. All right, 7.11, storage of materials. The note here is there will not be any storage of materials that will encourage breeding and harboring of insects, rats, or vermin. It's great news. For us, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, 7.12, emergency services. Um, Mark just brought that up. Yeah, it says uh, the... The ordinance requires uh, applicants to demonstrate access to a sufficient water supply. And the note here is the nearest water supply is a fire hydrant across Main Street. And uh, it's noted in the letter from the fire department that uh, the water service by municipal water doesn't need any additional measures. So we should be all set on that one. If there is another hydrant up School Street, one across Main Street is it's it's closer. closer, yeah. 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 All right, and then uh, the last one, section seven is 7.13, archeological or historic sites. Um, the ordinance says, for any proposed land use activity requiring application review, the owner or developer shall contact Maine Historic Preservation Commission 
and requests written written confirmation as to whether or not the site of the development has potential historic or archaeological significance and uh continues on from there have you contacted them I about this i did not i did where it's an existing building we're not doing any site work i probably erroneously assumed that that would not be mm -hmm. necessary yeah yeah if it is an archaeological site then <laughs> it's already under a five thousand square foot building sure <laughs> <laughs> okay so I guess we'll, uh, this is also listed as an NA on the application. Uh, is there any uh, comment about any of the issues that we've talked about in section seven? Yes. Hi. Um, I just had a question about the hours of operation. Yep. Did those change from the beginning? It was two to nine. Oh, two to nine. Last time. Okay. I'm not the person that's in charge of that. So if I misspoke just now, I apologize. And uh, um, whatever it says in that document is the intended oh, hours. Yes, You're, in February, you had sent four to nine. Four to nine. That's how I remembered it. Yeah, I, two, two seems early to me for what we're intending to do there. But I imagine it's the, the closing time that's of more importance. Um, and if it says nine in there, then that's what it is. So it's not till 10 p.m. If it says nine in there, it's not. Yeah. Does it say nine in there? I didn't. I didn't, I didn't I, never see it. That was in the oh, pre-application. Was... Are you okay with nine? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Trying to be on silver plane. It just seems odd to me that the the architect shouldn't be. Scrambling for the guy, but I would think the owner would have a sense of what your ask. Well, <laughs> it depends on how you want to look at it. If I look at pure square foot numbers, that the wine bar can have 44 people. Um, Taking out space for the bar space and all that stuff. Because uh, you use 15 square feet per person yeah. to, to figure that out. I have had job seeing them having 44 people <laughs> there on a regular basis. If if they knew, it's wonderful, wonderful for them. I, I don't know if that would be wonderful for us. <clears throat> uh, I, uh, I don't think that that's what we're expecting. <laughs> but if that's what the occupancy says, that's the occupancy. Going along with that, and I'm just guessing here, is the wine bar going where the old garage is? Yeah, the carriage, the ground floor of the carriage house. Yes, right. what yeah, the one part. Yeah. Okay. Right. And where's the patio? Was there a talk discussion about a patio, an outside patio? No, that's what Barbara was just asking. I was saying there will be outdoor seating because the yard will also service the bed and breakfast, but the, the wine bar is the interior of the carriage space. So I do have a question on the um on one section I saw there was no fencing. If you expect to have, um, you know, wine and beer outside, I believe it has to be fenced in. They can't have free reign of the property. Um, you might want to double check that just to make sure, but I believe it it has to be contained. So okay, right. Okay. <clears throat> Somewhere between two and 44 people. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please. Um, just to clarify the parking issue, I sounds like you have it covered theory. Um, anytime there's a big event, it spills on a school street. Um, is the and we I've had this conversation at select board meetings. Is the maybe there's something that can be passed along? I can do it there too, but some sort of signage on School Street. Um, I mean, temporary stuff, whether it's a big <laughs> service, funeral home, or a big show, it's sort of understand what the concern we had this winter was the overflow on School Street. You can't make the corner, yeah, um, if it's slippery. So, and I know you want to operate year round, so that's that. I guess 
how is that going to be handled by the town and what's our recourse if people with all their best intent are not listening to them so i was going to bring it up during article nine when it was going to talk I about street you, access well no i mean it had to be it had to be said at some point tonight am i right yeah um I talked with John Daigle from Public Works. He said that he is now getting some signs that will say no parking along School Street, just to outline that to everyone. And I wanted to confirm with Julie before this, uh, and she said that if there are still people who are going to be parking on School Street, you do need to call the police at that point. Okay. And then Perfect. police will send someone out. So that makes it our job a lot easier, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Is it the whole school street max or just all school street? One side that abuts that all I school street. The whole street. Whole street. That's a weird rule because that's a generous street. And well, well, but that's we another also, issue. That yeah, we, street planning is all another I, Yeah. And faculty. we talked with the public works and the emergency services about trying to allow on street parking doing one way. And that's a bigger conversation. And they yeah. don't want to support anything at this point. Right. That right, it's understandable, but it yes. does make it hard to someone to have a birthday party on who lives on the street. <laughs> and there, you know, there are general issues. But sorry, I assume that uh, no parking will also apply to Shady Ave, adjacent to school. I don't recall. I'd have to talk with I, I'd have to talk with John about that. But it's supposed to be any any place that's on the traffic ordinance that outlines no on street parking, and I believe Shady Avenue is included in there. Yeah, you can find that traffic ordinance on the town website. Okay. And it lists all of the areas where parking is restricted. Okay. You, you said that there probably won't be parking in the same thing. I, I was just I was asked about school I was asked about School Street and that was the answer I got from John. I didn't specify the other streets as well, but I can confirm that as well. Because I think if someone was parking on it, no one would get that. You know, it's great, you know. Right. So I guess I'm just wondering if they'll put post some no parking signs, just one or two along the street in Shady Avenue. Too. The specifics I'd have to ask John Day yeah. about. Okay, maybe we could get copies of that ordinance for our ordinance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because that the ordinance also states that a lot of the parking spaces are one hour. Um, so it very, it's very limited on what you can do in these public parking spaces. Um, the other thing is, is that, um, during storms and stuff like that, um, you know, between certain hours and, and, um, also between certain months, it restricts parking altogether on street for snow removal. So, um, yeah, when we do get to, um, article nine, I do have some, some concerns. Okay, um, so Article 7. That we can't do it. We have. I'm just recapping. Okay. All right. The, the application is uh, requesting a not applicable for 7.1. Uh, 7.4. 7.5. For 7.9, I know I have a letter from Gordon. I just can't find it right now, so... That could just be a condition if this is being Yeah, let's see that. All right. Uh, and then 7.13 is also an NA. That makes sense to everybody? Yep. Okay. I do have a question. I know it says archaeological, but it also states uh, historical. Um, is that building part of the um, registered historical buildings in town, or is it? No, it, it is, is not. not. It is not. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, can we have a motion to accept Article 7 uh, with a not applicable for 7.1, 7.4, 7.5, Seven point thirteen, and uh, a condition for seven point nine that a letter will be uh, provided from uh, the utility districts. I would also ask that, um, depending on what happens with the parking situation, if if that were to change, then some of the conditions in here would change as well, as far as developing the site further for on off street parking. So I don't know how far we want to go to approve something, then go to section nine and require more parking spaces, which would require some changes to seven. So right now, article seven is just confirming that you're satisfied with the answers that have been given so far. And then once we've gone through all the other articles, there'll be one more vote. And Mark, I'm going to make a note of what you're talking about. So I make motion that we approve Article 7 as you just described, and no way I can repeat it. <laughs> Second that. Barbara made the motion and Jeff seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. All five. All right, Article 8, Environmental Standards. This one should be pretty straightforward. Uh, there's no change in the stormwater according to the application because there's nothing that's being changed on the site. Erosion control, uh, they're not digging up or creating a condition that would destabilize soils. Groundwater impacts is asking for an NA, which seems reasonable to me. Uh, water quality impacts. I can't imagine how. All right, phosphorus control. Said that one is asking for an NA, which means reasonable. Shouldn't be a lot of fertilizer out there. 8.6 is soils. This is an NA. Air and water pollution. The uh, note here says that the proposal will not result in undue air or water pollution on or off site, which makes sense to me. 8.8, 8, aesthetic, cultural, and natural values. Uh, the ordinance says, will not have an undue adverse effect on scenic or natural beauty of the area, aesthetics, historic sites, significant wildlife habitat, rare and irreplaceable natural areas, or any public rights for physical, physical or visual access to shoreline. And the application uh, says the project will not have an undue effect. I think makes perfect sense. There's no exterior changes. It's outside of the flood zone for 8.9. So that's an NA, as is 8.10, river stream, brooks, and wetlands. And also for 8.11, buffer requirements for water quality. All of these are requesting an NA. Any discussion on that? It's self-evident. It seems straightforward to me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so can we have a motion to accept uh, Article 8 with a not applicable note for 8.3, 8.5, 8.6, 8.9, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 8.42, 8.43, 8.44, 8.45, 8.46, 8.47, 8.48, 8.49, 8.50, 8.51, 8.52, 8.53, 8.54, 8.55, 8.56, 8.57, 8.58, 8.59, 8.60, 8.61, 8.62, 8.63, 8.64, 8.65, 8.66, 8.67, 8.68, 8.69, 8.70, 8.71, 8.72, 8.73, 8.74, 8.75, 8.76, 8.77, 8.78, 8.79, 8.80, 8.81, 8.82, 8.83, 8.84, 8.85, 8.86, 8.87, 8.88, 8.89, 8.90, 8.91, 8.92, 8.93, 8.94, 8.95, 8.96, 8.97, 8.98, 8.99, 8.10, 8.11, 8.12, 8.13, 8.14, 8.15, 8.16, 8.17, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 8.36, 8.37, 8.38, 8.39, 8.40, 8.41, 
Second that, Max. Jeff made the motion and Johnny seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? I see Mark's hand up online. Okay, Article 9. Traffic impacts. So 9.1 uh, asks for a traffic impact analysis uh, if the project is providing parking for 50 or more vehicles or will generate more than 100 trips during the AM or PM peak hours. Uh, the note here in the application is product, project will provide less than 50 parking spaces. It will generate less than 100 trips during peak hour. Um, that makes perfect sense to me. You have five rooms, maybe a dozen people at the wine bar. Yeah. <laughs> makes sense to me. All right. 9.2 9 is street access, driveways, and construction standards. Um, most of what this refers to is adding new driveways. Um, and my understanding from your plan is there's three existing parking spaces on site now, and you're planning to just continue to use those, and they're going to be for the uh, the owner and the staff. Is that right? And and guest loading and unloading. So there's a, um, yeah. So I have a few questions regarding the um, or comments to make about the parking um, that you provided, Chuck. Yeah. Town parking, a um, couple things come to mind. Um, it's hard to tell from, for instance, where you um, uh, circled around the Glidden Street parking. Um, you know that the two ones towards the north are private. So yeah, I, I don't know what you used for a number. It's hard to tell for this. For, uh, no, I, I, I just, I, I did not do a research to see if any, I just think that, that was all public. Okay. Wasn't not all public, two were private. So there, there, I believe there are 10 public spots, spots there. The other thing that no one would know yet, because we've been working on it for a couple of years, but eventually the town is going to put a handicapped parking spot in front of the wall though. So I don't know what you're, you probably said what the total was that you came up with, but so I've just knocked out three parking spots here. And I understand, I could be wrong. It may be that um, Broadway Church also would like to do a handicapped parking spot as well at some point. So um, whatever, did you have a total number? Yes, I did. I, I forget what it was. I read it, but yeah, what did you say it was? There was 20, 22 with what I. Okay, so we've just knocked out four just friends here. And, and I didn't count all public spaces in the area. Yeah. There are right. more there. I mean, those are those are just the one, those are the close ones. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so, and then the five, I mean, obviously, I think we need to um, have the, the um, the agreement with five offsite parking spaces that this thing running being totally contingent on having that refreshed at, by June of every year. That's active. And I also kind of wonder if you shouldn't ask for more because sometimes five rooms. Four spaces. Be, yeah. We asked for eight to 11. They said four. We said, please give us five. That'll let us meet at least the requirement for overnight parking. And they said, we'd be happy to. So you can get a little bit more. Well, if we can build good relationships over the next year, then we can go back and maybe uh, yeah. ask them for more. But, exactly. Uh, um, yeah. What about Waldo Theater? Since you are right next to that, have you um, talked to anybody at Waldo Theater about shared parking with them? We, we've not asked the Waldo Theater for parking. We considered that, but all the conversations that we've had with them is that they have a deficiency of parking. So given that we need dedicated set aside parking spaces for our business, it wouldn't make it, it, it wouldn't be feasible for the Waldo Theater to give. I, I am assuming that it would not be feasible for them to give those up. As I know, I've heard from a lot of the neighbors. It's a concern, too, when there's events there, parking spills out in the neighborhood. So. Giving up like the, the number of times that they actually have events there um, is minimal compared to what you're going to have. I, I'm very concerned about pushing all the parking onto, you know, public parking 
and the project not really supplying any parking for its business itself. Um, that really doesn't sit very well with me. Uh, it seems like the the town is now footing the bill for you know parking issues other than the five spaces that you know you were able to get from the library. So I kind of agree with you, Mark. I mean, it was clearly a concern, and it's not like in this case that there was a um, a mitigating factor that you couldn't provide more parking on this site, given what all the activity that's going to happen here. So I was I was very surprised this site plan come in with no well, given, plans for additional. Given the, the requirements of the parking spaces, in order uh, for us to meet the requirements for commercial spaces, um, meaning that we can't back out onto the street and they have to be a certain size and you have to be able to turn around on the property. Uh, if we were to turn that whole backyard into a parking spot, we could provide three, maybe four parking spaces on site. The, the site doesn't like, and, and the reason I say that is to say we're not being stingy. It just actually isn't feasible on site. We, we could eliminate that whole yard and maybe provide three or four parking spaces as opposed to the two that we're providing now, but it wouldn't. Um, but you could have a one-way loop in the driveway and out onto Shady Ave. So we, we, we can take out all the landscaping and pave it and maybe get four spaces. Yeah, even, if, even if you did a loop the um, to line cars up that way, you're going to get three or four. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I've spent hours in that yard with the tape measure trying to figure out how to do it on site. And it's really, you, you do a lot of destruction in the yard and the properties to add one, maybe two more parking spots. Right. I was just thinking, it came to me, what if you had the perfect storm of you guys had a, had a nice following? There was an event at the Waldo and, and there was a funeral. Mm -hmm. I mean, if those convert, that would be a maelstrom, wouldn't it? Well, forget them. If there's a funeral and an event at the Waldo if you're going at the same time, that's a big problem. Right. So if you add that to the mix, I, I mean, I'm just wondering if there's a contingency plan or is it is it first come, first serve? When you get a I mean, when it happens, it's going to be too late to undo it. I want to make a comment. I'm really puzzled about this concern about parking. The Waldo Theater certainly has more than 44 people, and the cars go up and down Main Street, sometimes as far as my house. Um, and halls have their, you know, services there as well. I have not heard of or seen any kind of a conflict there. I'm going to guess that you and your, the theater occasionally will be occurring on the, you'll, you'll have your folks there on the same day the theater is. Yeah. But I'm thinking about towns like Rockport and Camden. Mm -hmm. Opera House in Rockport has no parking. Mm -hmm. And I don't have never heard of people complaining as they come up the hill and make that sharp turn mm -hmm. about parking. Same thing in Camden. The Camden Library, the public library, has absolutely no parking except on street parking. Now, how have other towns figured this out and we're having such a difficult time with it? Help me to understand. <laughs> I yes. also agree with this as well. If we're a town that's going to grow, I mean, a lot of businesses in town don't have designated parking. Um, this is in the village. Mm -hmm. And if someone, I don't think someone's going to be insistent on parking and going to the wine bar. If there's not parking, they can go to the odd alewives, they can go to the narrows, they can go somewhere else. You know, there's, I don't, I don't think people are going to start parking in people's driveways and stuff. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, and I also don't imagine this being, a, I mean, when you, when you look at some other places that are similar, small wine bars, it's not that many people. It's Walterboro. You know, it's, 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 you know, there's always just a hand, even odd alewives. There's never, I don't think, 44 people even at odd alewives. And they get even on space and they've got all tons of parking. It's not, I, I don't feel like there's going to be a lot of people there. And I, I also wonder that parking on the property might be more destructive to the area and the residents and people coming and going in a small lot like that than if they are part of parking in public spaces where every other town every other business in town is has a parking park as well. Yes. I understand that, but I, I just think that moving forward, you know, we need to we need to make sure that we're not creating a situation for the long term where we keep pushing 
parking off onto the business side of things. Um, I'm, I'm just really concerned that, you know, we've had a lot of con comments from the neighbors on the parking situation um, and the narrowness of the roads. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. and then on top of that, we've got, uh, you know, we're going to start utilizing parking uh, potentially long-term, you know, over what the ordinance allows. So uh, I'm, I'm very concerned about the parking situation. <laughs> it sounds like the, the, Parking on School Street, at least, is being addressed by no parking signs. So that I, I think would provide something for the residents there. Um, it changed. And shade. It, it, yeah, it's like you wasn't able to confirm. The, shade, but, yeah. the one's not on Main Street. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I, I understand the ordinance uh, makes this request. And, and like I said, we've jumped through every hoop to try to understand how to do it on site. We've reached out to everybody in the neighborhood that we could think to reach out to try to find off street parking and we can continue to be proactive in that and we are on main street and there is public parking there and i almost never see anybody parked on main street i, I never see anybody parked on uh the, in the public parking spots spaces unless there's an event at the theater or um and and i feel like i'm being asked to answer for what should be done about that and i don't have an answer for that that's not that's I, not on me to provide a solution to what happens when the theater overflows or the funeral hall overflows. No, but you're being asked to provide, you know, your share of trying to reduce that. We don't want yeah. the side streets. We've addressed, obviously, by the sounds of it, the parking situation on School Street, but that doesn't necessarily, you know, negate any of the people from trying to park on any of the other side streets. I don't know what John Daigle's plans are for that whole neighborhood. But um, it would behoove us to make sure that we're not creating a nuisance in that neighborhood. Yeah. So what I will add, I don't know if I'm adding fuel to the fire. The town parking situation, I think it was announced at the last select board meeting. We are closing on the Worcester parking lot right behind Friendship Block. That would hopefully end with the work we've already done with the UMO students and we'll do an engineering study on. We're hoping that's going to address quite a few maybe two three hopefully dozen new spaces in the downtown it's certainly a walk from where you are but at least to answer the question about waldo theater or any overflow of parking we do have that plus the 20 ish 24 spaces over at coon parking lot so there there is space it won't be right next door but there is space in the downtown max what's the overnight it's not directly related, but overnight snow situation, parking in, in the town lots. What what can you do? Can you be there if, during the snowstorm? The the two off street ones or the on street ones? If it's Either if it's way. if it snows, the public works department doesn't want and Jan and Bob are in the audience, so they can correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe if it's gonna snow and the public works department needs it. They'll tell people to not park on the main on Main Street or Friendship or Jefferson and tell people to instead park on Coon and soon to be Worcester parking lots. I assume that's where. Yeah. And our our guests wouldn't be overnight parking in any of those places anyway, because we have the dedicated spaces in the library right. for overnight guests. Right. The only public park would be for somebody who was going to a Dwight bar, who I would assume they're not going to stay right there. Yeah. It snowed in in three hours. Yeah. What's that? It snowed in in three hours' time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, it's all. Um, it does meet the ordinance technically. Um, I have a I have a question about the uh, the the notes here in nine point three point three point three point nine of the number of spaces required. Um, we don't have a parking ordinance for a bar and uh the note here uh says that by ordinance this would the wine bar would require seven spaces um i'm wondering how you came up with the seven spaces especially when, when we don't when have the you don't have something listed you find the closest pigeonhole that you have which is an assembly occupancy i thought it was restaurant you agree with that, are you using restaurant cars per? Yes, yes. And that one has a uh, one for every three seats, and you just said twenty-one seats were the estimated for the blind bar. 
there's also three seats or there's an, there's an area or nine for every 1,000 square feet. Right, I'm right, sorry. Right. Yeah. And that's what we, we use. And our, and our space is square feet and it's not, it's not a thousand square feet. It's less than a thousand. So that, that's where that number came from. Also the, um, the, the wine bar that will operate in the carriage house, the carriage house is not going to be winterized. The wine bar that will operate in the winter is significantly smaller. It's, it's maybe 250, 300 square feet. So the capacity for that for the, the majority of the year actually will be much lower than um, it will be for the four, four and a half months that we're actually operating the, the carriage house. So how do we square those things? Because we're talking about the carriage house and we have a requirement for restaurants or bars for parking, but um, how does how do we do that in the historic village or downtown? Oh, well, in the downtown, there's no parking required, right? In the historic village, it's the numbers that we just went over, and it's would either be this restaurant or other uses not listed that's determined by the planning board. And for this application, they went with the restaurant to show what they can do. So when the restaurant went in at 955, they provided off-site parking. Um, there's, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm just asking, um, so do we say that we're giving them a waiver on this application? Not necessarily for the bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. that one's all set, but right. the okay. wine bar, yeah. the wine bar, it's, it's up to the planning board if you feel that the municipal parking lot satisfies that requirement. If it doesn't, you can decide on giving a waiver. Well, I guess it's. I guess the first question is: Do you think the municipal spots are sufficient for the wine bar? Does anyone have an issue with it? I am. I'm. I'm accepting it. This situation, uh, but I'm kind of wondering about what we should do in the future. If it's this, you know, maybe we should be rethinking how the ordinance reads in the future. Parking in the downtown is probably going to be something that the town office has to deal with more than anything, trying to find some more spaces. But that's not, uh, Nathan said it earlier, that's that's yeah. unfortunately something that's just been on the back burner for so long. The parking in downtown areas is a problem it's in every town. It's not yeah. just Waldsboro. I mean, it's... Yeah. <laughs> well, there's uh, there's a lot of different ways that we can uh, look at this. Uh, I would agree that we don't have an issue with the five spaces for the bed and breakfast because that's been accounted for. Um, if the use is a bar and the use is not listed, then to me if I'm just straight reading the ordinance, trying to figure out what that number of seats is that's required. Um, I don't know that my, uh, that the right way to read this is that uh, we find the closest thing and apply that rule to it. Um, if the use is not listed, then uh, it would seem to me that the number of spaces is to be determined by the planning board. So I think that we can, make a decision uh, using that bottom most uh, line on the chart here and make a decision about what to do with it. Um, given the location and the amount of public parking that's nearby, it seems fairly reasonable to me to allow the use of the public parking for that uh, for that application. And I think that the fact that there's no parking on the site might actually uh, be beneficial to keeping the neighborhood quiet because nobody's actually going to be driving up to the door. People are going to be parking on Main Street, parking on Glidden Street, or hiking up and down the hill, and none of which is really going to disturb the neighborhood. Wait, they're not going to park on Glidden, just in the parking lot if there's available parking. Yeah, because the, uh, there's a lot there. The theater has events now and activities all the time. Right. They set it up very slow, but they're, they're building. Yes. 
So um, I that makes sense. I think that given the number of parking spaces that's required uh, for what will be a typical occupant load on the wine bar, it seems reasonable to use public spaces for that. I understand everybody's concerns. Um, I live in the village as well, and my uh, my house butts onto the Coon lot. And I can tell you that that lot never fills up, ever. Um, I know people are concerned about there being total number of parking spaces. Um, there's always parking spaces that are just not where you want them. You know, you might have to walk a block to get to where you need to go, um, which, you know, in a town is a pretty typical thing to do. So I would tend to uh, tend to agree that the public spaces are adequate for this particular occupancy. What does the rest of the board think? I think so too. I got kind of a funny question and I should have asked it earlier. Do we look at this, is it a wine bar with a bed and breakfast or a bed and breakfast <laughs> with a wine bar? And you can interpose however you want to. I think that, uh, I think that given that we're the um, wine and beer license that we're applying for is contingent on us being a bed and breakfast, we're primarily a bed and breakfast that also happens to have a uh, a wine bar. I see. So it's a, okay. And Johnny, specific to the... Uh, the parking issue. Yeah. Neither one of those businesses will have parking on site. Everybody's parking. So that's that's what I get now, yeah. I guess. So yeah. okay. All right. It just yeah. Excuse me. Is there any um I'm concerned about I live on Glidden Street and that's extremely narrow. But there's no, you know, it's just but I, why does that grow? So I understand since I walk all around the neighborhood all the time. Everybody's got a dog up there. And um, it would be, it is ridiculous to think that you could park on Shady Lane, for instance, because there's not enough room for another car to get by. Same thing on Glen Street. Witness the curb. Okay, even the plow couldn't get there. So, I mean, that's been the way forever, <laughs> thinking about history. That, those streets were probably started when there weren't going to be so many cars. So the public thing that you brought up, and you, you folks know all the little spots in the town better than anybody, I don't see anything wrong with that because if you go to the city of Boston or down to Cape Cod and try and find a spot by a restaurant, you're going to wind up looking a long way for parking space. It's the same thing here. Not a big community, but if you, if, if you know with people from the place, from the public sites, Here's where you find your public parking. People are going to get used to that. The benefit of that is if, okay, they're parking on Main Street, say, oh, there's the Waldo Theater. I didn't know that was here. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get used to the town, mm -hmm. which is an advantage to them. And, and that. certainly to everybody who lives on that street because, you know, there's, there's <laughs> a history on that street of. Uh, Dog walkers. It's it's a great neighborhood, absolutely great neighborhood. Everybody's very close, and so that's if you can say that, you won't see a lot of for sale signs. Yes. <laughs> yes. A bar with rooms is that an inn or a bed and breakfast? Uh, uh, like that. Is it or is it? I think it's a bastard. It doesn't, the the presence of the wine bar doesn't change the definition. It doesn't. Uh, no, it actually. Didn't the, didn't the gentleman on Shady Lane before the house burnt down, didn't he come here? Oh, the Reed Mansion? Yes. Oh, that was a, that was supposed to be like an event center or something before we even had a definition no. for all that. Oh, I thought it was supposed to be an inn. I, I'd have to go through the whole thing, but. It with for with, time. with what we are at the time, I'll, yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure we can go through this so that we also have time for the. There's, the almost answer, if there's technical differences between an inn and a bed and breakfast that are defined by the, the state and the town ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. we very clearly fall into. Is it someone lives breakfast. in? It's considered yes. bed and breakfast. It has yeah. to do with the number of rooms, the fact that we'll provide food. There, there's a bunch of factors. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay, you answered my question. Thank you. All right. So I think that we went through everything on 
Article nine. I think we've talked that about to death. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's a not a, there's really not a not applicable for them. It would just be a yay. Yep. Board. Okay. So, do we have a motion to accept Article Nine as submitted? I move to uh, accept Article Nine. I second it. Jeff made the motion, and Barbara seconded. Any uh, further discussion? All those in favor? That's four. And Mark is a no. Well. Mark, is that a no? Your post. Yeah, can you unmute? That's correct. That's that's a no. Okay. Mark poses. All right. Section ten is specifically this would just be ten point six. Everything else would be not applicable. Perfect. All right. So uh, 10.6, we have a scale drawing, of course, uh, parking. Uh, we've already talked about that. Uh, bathrooms, there's a separate bathroom for the dwelling, separate from the bathrooms for the rental rooms. Is this really part of the bed and breakfast? Yeah, these are specific requirements for the bed and breakfast. <clears throat> uh, 10.6.4 room size. Each room should be not less than 120 square feet. Uh, 10.6.5 must have a smoke detector. And that is it for the bed and breakfast. Um, the application confirms that the room size will be adequate. And it says that each room stairwell and hallway will have an approved smoke detector yeah that probably should read a little bit different that should conform to life safety codes 101 so and i think that um life safety codes may require uh, don't quote me on it but they may require also carbon monoxide yes i think i think they do okay um, I think that we have a separate code uh, section where they, uh, yeah, 7.2.2, .2, they confirm that they're going to comply with NFPA 101. Um, so that, that's probably the more restrictive standard than our ordinance about the bed and breakfast. Okay, uh, do we have a motion to accept section 10? I make motion that we accept section 10. I will second that. Barbara made the motion. Brendan made the second. Any discussion? I just had one question, uh, and I forgot to ask: is is the bed and breakfast and the wine bar handicap accessible? There's uh, there's one room on the ground floor that will be handicap accessible, and one uh, public bathroom that will be handicap. So there'll be a ramp of some type, or yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor? This is just for this is just Article that 10. Was just 10. Yeah. Article 10. Um, so that was fourth year. Mark, did you have your hand up? Approve? Okay. Now we can vote determined complete. Now the final vote to accept the application is presented. When I have two conditions from the notes that I have, one is that a letter will be provided by the utility district to satisfy the sanitary requirements. And then this was something uh, continuing off street agreement with Ben Breakfast. That was raised earlier. I don't know if that's good. Yep. I'm seeing a head nod. Yep. Okay. That's my, that was my expectation as well. I don't know that we actually talked about it, but um, it makes, that needs to be continued, uh, included as a condition that the uh, lease we spaces to continue to. For the Ben Burns. Yeah. So 
Um, the motion would be to approve the application for 926 Main Street as presented with the conditions that one, there will be a letter from the utility district to satisfy the sewer requirements. And two, the business would continue off continue an off street agreement parking requirement for the bed and breakfast. I probably mumbled that second one. I'll move to accept it as noted. I second it. Discussion? Question. Yes. Quick question, please. On your uh, PDF form, you're calling it the Waldebaro Inn. When you make your signs, are you going to be calling it the inn or are you going to be calling it the Ben The Waldebaro Inn. So, which, is, which will just be a company name. It'll be an LLC. Okay. I see. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Uh, we're we're hoping to open three rooms June first. Um, we'll we'll see how we do. Let the sleeping with fresh paint. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, great. So, uh, just the motions on the floor. Just need to vote. I do. I do have one question that um, if you're opening with three, are you going to have the renovations done, including the sprinkler system prior to? Uh, the, the sprinkler system is not a requirement until we uh, provide more than three rooms. So um, we will be operating at, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the building, but there's an original house, there's an original carriage house, and there's an addition that was put on that connects the two. Um, the addition is in, uh, needs a significant amount of work. So we're, we have prepared the original house, which is in good condition. We'll rent rooms out of there this summer. And then next um, uh, fall, we'll shut down and, and major renovations will happen over next winter, which is when the sprinkler system will go in before we start operating with five rooms. We, we just applied for the five rooms now so that we don't have to come back in six months and do this whole process again. So we're approved to do five rooms and we will put the sprinkler system in before we operate with more than three rooms, if, if that all makes sense. Just double check with the fire marshal's office, talking to uh, Waldeboro Code Enforcement. Um, he was under the understanding when you hit three, that required the sprinkler system and the fire marshal, um, you know, coming in and doing a, a review and stuff. So just- uh, I, I, I could be wrong. I've talked to the state fire <laughs> marshal and code enforcer and, um, I, I will do that. Okay, yeah. So, and and Chuck's working on that, and we'll make sure that we're in compliance there. Yep. Is there any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? And then all those opposed? Mark is opposed. All right. All right. Motion passes. So following this, I'll just send some updates to you through yep. an email later on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give everyone a minute who doesn't want to stick around for the 80 grade application. That's what I you know, I offer um it's not required but yeah like i think if we had a majority decision to vote it down then we would want to give something but if it's a minor decision then it's certainly up to it's up to the person if they want to say it all right okay. Okay. Appreciate it. <laughs> 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 
But I'm making those just in case. No, it looks like it's going to be. I think that's fairly And then they Yeah, yeah. I assume that we're doing this because of. Okay. Yes, please. Um, Dorm Chamberlain and Dwarf Engineering. Uh, we've been hired by. Uh, um, sorry. Hi, folks. Hello. If if you're still here for the meeting, we're we got to continue with volunteers in America. Um, so I'm here for uh, Volunteers of America in Northern New England. Uh, we have Brian Sykes uh, with uh, VOA. Uh, he's on Zoom. I also have Bob Foster, the architect. Uh, I'll try to go through this fairly quickly. Uh, this is two properties uh, on School Street, School Street, lot 62 and 63, totaling about four and a half acres. Uh, the parcels are currently owned by the town. The property is owned uh, Historic Village. It was recently changed to that. Uh, the current development on the site is the AD Gray building, a paved parking lot, and a tennis court. Uh, the property around the site is residential to the east and south, uh, and uh, the ball field to the north and a forested area uh, to the west. Uh, we have uh, existing water and sewer connections. The proposed development is a 36-unit, three-story senior housing facility. Uh, we're proposing a 33-car parking lot. Uh, there will also be uh, we're going to take the tennis court, court out, uh, group, regrade that area, put a uh, gazebo down in there, so it'll be a flat uh, lawn area. Um, utilities, uh, again, we're going to be uh, extending from the hydrant on School Street up to the street to the school building, or the, the property. For a sprinkler system, we're still working with um, the water district and Maine Water Company is working for them to determine pressures and flow capacity and things like that. Uh, so we do not have an ability to serve on the water yet. We're waiting for that. We have provided one from the sewer department. Um, so we're all set there. Uh, I will be from CMP. Um, we're still working with them on how we're actually gonna bring it into the site. Uh, it will likely be at that first corner where the is, but uh, it may go up past the school and over, but we're, we're not worried about that as yet. So, uh, uh, stormwater management, we uh, put in some underground retention to uh, meet the uh, pre-development two grades of runoff for the 2025 year storm. Uh, we'll be dumping, dumping, we'll be, uh, the water will be going into a level spreader that's there on the embankment uh, about where the fence is for the tennis court towards that ravine. Um, what that does is if the water will go into that, it'll spread it out before it, it drains into that swale. Uh, eventually that goes around and there's a stream back in there. Um, traffic, again, we said we're gonna have a 33 uh, car parking lot. We're well under the uh, 50 car lot requirement for a traffic study. We're not going to have 100 trips per peak hour. Um, our experience with these sites is that we have a need of much less than one space per unit. Um, so we're requesting a reduction on that. Uh, the only other permit that we have found that will be required other than building permits with the town is a stormwater permit by rule from DC. That is my presentation. I'll answer any questions you may have. So um, I was surprised to see that the tent, I didn't know that the tennis courts were going. Can you explain where they're going to? Um, and is this now property that you'll be mowing? So yeah, so we're looking to split off a, a little over two acres that will be um, 
it's the, the green area that you see on the map there. Uh -huh. So that's about two acres. The parcel across the street on the other side of Hillbrook is, is part of that lot, but we're proposing that would remain with the town as well as the, uh, the property to the north with the ball fields. Um, the, the last time we met with the town, I guess that was the discussion, was the tennis courts are pretty damaged and we'll just take well. So, and I'll answer that as well. Part of the packet that you got was the letter that the town uh, sort of authorized on Tuesday. And the last paragraph explains everything about the tennis courts. So I've been discussing with people about uh, the YMCA and the Mainland Water Conservation Fund, the latter of which did the grant to make those courts. Both of them said that it is pretty much beyond saving at this point. Mm -hmm. And even if we were to try and save it, it would be almost the same cost of building new tennis courts. Someone's probably going to say that they can do it for five bucks online or something, but I'm not going to argue with that. Um, so what the plan is going to be is at the same time on Tuesday, uh, the select board approved the process to transfer the covenant on the tennis courts to Foster's Field, which is potentially going to be donated to the town. So if I'm following the process correctly, we will pretend, we will be applying for a land water conservation grant next year during that cycle where we can put the tennis courts either north of the 80 grade field, 80 grade school or on another spot that the town wants to put it at. The Sylvania committee has been looking at making that re rehabilitating that place to be more of a waterfront park, similar to what Belfast has. So okay. we we do have the money coming. It's just not going to be here this year <laughs> so given that and given the, the gazebo i'm sure a lot of people can be thrilled about finally having a gazebo in town you envision this in terms of where it's placed that people would be using the field to you know there might be an event happening at the gazebo or are they coming are they coming into the back field and you know, i think it's really strategic it's intended in to be way? for the residents of oh. the building uh, what, what my understanding is that they're going to eventually ask for a gazebo. So we put it in there exactly. now for, for, for the rush later. So this on. isn't really a Waldemaro asset. Not, you know, okay. you know, I mean, we, we had talked about you know allowing the town to park there if the tennis court was going to remain. But when that came out, it just made sense to, to draw a line around the whole thing. And you know, we've been calling it a bocce court. Uh, mm -hmm. It would be a nice flat bar. Just wanted to clarify it. Oh. Me, uh, on you're going to raise the the, the the building in the tennis court. Is there any going to be any repurposing of any materials during the process? I mean, if you repurpose, you can do anything with the tennis court. So the two far gone. And right. So no, um, actually, there's um, so the there was a phase two environmental study done, done on the property, and it's likely that this is uh, this property is going to become part of what they call a BRAP, which is a voluntary remediation action plan if I got that right with the state and what that does is the contaminated soils on the site on the site will stay on the site so we may need to provide an area to, to put those uh, soils which is probably going to be right along the edge of the parking lot where it drops down to the tennis court we can just keep pushing that out uh, if we need additional is that any see. reference to mold, asbestos, anything of it's, that nature? Well, as, asbestos gets handled differently. This is the contaminants in the soil, right, which are really hard to get rid of and uh, have to go to specialized landfills. So the state has this program where if you agree to uh, entomb it on site, essentially, so they right. would get buried in a certain spot. They would put a, uh, a plastic snow fence, you know, the, the, the bright orange stuff that you see around. They would put that over it and then fill over that on uh, so the soil low and see. So that way you've got the material on site, it's not hurting anything. Um, that's what we're trying to do, just make it better. I can get one more quick question. Sure. I had a person uh, in the town, folks, she went to AD Gray and she knows I'm on the planning board. And she said, Well, Johnny, she said, uh, Do you really? think the flat roof is the best idea for that and i you know i just thought you know you know the snow is going to accumulate water is that is there is there a some regiment that you that you bake into it so that's the best 
I believe flat roofs are the most efficient, right, for this kind of a building. Well, for this project, we viewed it in a few different ways. Right. Uh, I mean, first of all, we looked at the, the massing on the building on the site. And three stories with a pitched roof, the building looks awfully big, so upright on the head. Uh, and we end up with a pitch, a roof pitch that's a little bit lower than what we really like for such a large stand. Right. So the so snow is going to be apt to sitting on that roof, especially in the valleys, and cause potential leaks. Uh, uh, technology wise, the flat roofs are, they perform just as well as a pitched roof, if not better. Uh, with a, a, with a, an EPD, EPDM membrane or a PPO membrane on that roof. Right. Uh, but it also, it's going to bring the scale of the building down, not having the pitch. I see. Uh, and it's also going to give us the option of uh, including uh, potential solar on the roof and some of the mechanical equipment that we're going to need for this building. I see. Because this building's going all electric. Uh, so we're going to have heat pumps throughout. So we're going to have condensing units and a lot of other chemical stuff. If we had a huge three foot snowstorm, you, would you have guys go up there to shovel it or how does that work? Uh, flat roofs. They're typically designed to support anything yeah. we're going to get snow wise. Okay. Uh, you know, that rare stor storm that comes along, you're going to have to shovel any type of roof off, whether it's a pitched roof or a flat. Okay. Has, have you all seen the drawings or seen the plans so you don't need, because you don't have a plan to hold up or anything? Well, I can pull it up. I can pull it up on the TV if there's. Yeah, well, I guess we have that. We've got some images of that. All right. Yes. Yeah, go on. Um, so as far as the site plan goes, um, if I may, um, this thing, uh, basically, I think it's looking quite good. And I love the fact that the buildings push back off the road a little bit and all that kind of thing. I do think if you're coming up School Street, that that entrance corner, like this makes me wonder where the sign is for the, for the complex, where, you know, how people... In other words, you don't have anything that kind of accentuates the turn into the parking lot, which is actually end up being the front door, basically. And it also brings up this monument thing on the opposite side of the road, which I just don't, I have a lot of problems with for a couple of reasons. I think that it's, um, I'm not sure why it's there. And it's almost like, you know, you're driving up the road, you see the monument, you see the building, it's almost like up ahead, is the entrance to the complex, as opposed to it's actually you know private neighborhood up, up beyond that monument. So I'm wondering why, if there's going to be a sign or some kind of reference to the historical park, why it isn't brought over into the entrance corner and making something more of the entry into the. Well, what we are looking to do is take the the Walboro High School sign, take that off, and put it across the street. Mm -hmm. um, there really isn't enough room, I think, on the property, or well, it'd be difficult to incorporate it into the building in any case, but um, I think if there's going to be a sign, it would be a small one right there at the corner of the building as you come up School Street. And but you're not 100 percent sure that's even going to come off in one piece. Those, We're, in other words, and, and then snow, snow piling up and snow plowing is that going to you know does that get plowed? Um, it just it to me it reads like that's if I was had a can of spray paint. That's where I would go because it doesn't feel like it's owned. You know, it's not part of the yeah, property this, kind of thing. This was uh, we, we heard some feedback that the town was interested in something like that. So we ought to, unless you, if the town doesn't want it, we don't have to do it. I mean, it's it's really up to you. Yeah, I just kind of think it should be part of the actual complex. <laughs> Bob, do you have a question? Well, yeah, more of a comment. The reason, as you pointed out, the reason this whole thing came up is because the historical society felt there was some value in that capstone on the building. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that support concrete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not granite. No. It's probably going to bust in pieces yeah. as soon as you take it down. So it looks like it'll come apart in, I think, three pieces. If they're carefully, well, it looks, I think it's more like five or six pieces. Okay. If they're careful, they should be able to take it down. Okay, good. And I'm sure Barbara's concerned about directing how traffic perceives where it's supposed to go if that's thing sitting on the other side of the road on a piece that the town owns. Is that is that's that correct? That? Correct. Yeah. Yes. So the town, because it owns it, would have to agree to put it there because it's ours. Right. That's well, nice. well, well, we're, from. Right. What we're doing is we're offering it to the town. Okay. If the town doesn't want it. We don't have to do it. It's, 
question. Can I ask a question? How did you arrive at the look of the building uh, since it's not very New England y or it doesn't fit into the historic nature of the neighborhood? Yes. Uh, I mean, we're we're really here to talk about the site plan. The building has been discussed with the select board, and there's been some charrettes. This isn't a, I don't think it's a final uh, look for the building. I think the footprint is pretty well set, but yeah, the footprint's fairly well set. We actually had uh, a couple of meetings on Monday in the town here yeah. uh, to review, to talk about the design of the building. With the public or with yes, the town? The I think we had we had two of them, one at ten and one at six o'clock in the evening. We didn't know that. next door. Next door. Next door. I, so for that, I'm I wasn't really in charge of the notices until so no one I I no one there was there was there was one there was a select board meeting weeks ago that I know was then on the front page of the Lincoln County News. I didn't send out any letters to the butters because it wasn't a town official thing, and I wasn't told that I had to send anything out. And I sent, I had put up a Facebook post. Maybe it was the Friday before it all, but what Brian also said, and it's the offer still on the table, is we can still hold another community forum if there is still interest in it. Yeah. I, and can I just have one question, then I'm probably going to leave because I mean, there's no way you, you're not going to build it. Let me put it that way. Where I buffer and Sean, who's at 58 right there, those two houses, is there any way that we can have a buffer zone? We're trees we're or put fence in, yes. we're, or something. We're putting some landscaping in there. We're also putting a fence between School Street and the driveway to the uh, house at the bottom of the cave. So I'm here, right? Yeah. So you're going to turn in here. My property is all along here, right? And then Sean's property is all along this way, right? Well, there'll be something where Somebody leaves at night, right? My bedroom happens to be downstairs. I don't get light shining in my windows or this. There'll be a fence from right here to there. Okay. There'll be some space on this side of it. And we're doing some landscaping there. Once we get to this point, it's difficult to do a fence if it drops down pretty hard, but we're doing quite a bit of landscaping here. Okay. Okay, I think it's going to be, yes, there'll be some How high will the fence be? I'm just going to six foot. Okay, good. I can start there. That's all I wanted to know. Yeah, it's wonderful. Okay, thank you. Thank you for putting the sidewalk all the way up across your property. Going up to the ball boards. Um, so we're not talking about the building design too much tonight, or we are? What's the feedback on that, or do you want to focus on site plan, or? Well, here's can I jump in there? Um, we have a, a requirement uh, in the land use ordinance to uh, confirm that the building uh, meets the standards of the historic village district, and the standards are very vague. Um, I assume that you need some kind of an approval from the planning board to go through and do the rest of your approval process. Yes and your fundraising and, and all of that. Um, I don't think that we have any showstoppers in here, but what I think makes sense, given how much interest there is in the design of the building, um, that if when we go through here and, and do our vote on this, we would like, I would like you to come back um, so that we could sign off on the uh, historic uh, village district components of the architectural design. Um, you know, it's uh, it's undefined. I understand how the ambiguity in here is making this difficult, especially with, you know, various comments from the community pulling the design in many different directions. Um, just want to make sure that the, uh, you know, the intent is met. Um, so. That makes, and can I ask a question? You're, you're kind of, uh, you know, looking at the sloped, uh, the slanted roof um, on the street side and the park side. Do I understand this correctly that you're thinking that it's basically a mansard style roof, right? But the back, the parking lot would have a um, flat roof and a typical, it looks like we don't continue the same detail. Uh, the same, side. No, actually, the same details across the front is, is, on, the back is front. on the back. They wrap around the entire building. Okay. Okay. It flattens up in that. 
you yeah, have the, I guess. You have the two elements at the ends that are brick. They go all the way up. Right. But then the rest of it is all the, uh, okay. the brick base, the clad door siding in the middle, and the ramps are roof style going right. around the rest of the building. Um, I think that your the one image that you provide that shows the neighbor's house in terms of height. So by going to this sloped roof, we're still dealing with the same with same height building, right? We haven't changed the height in any way. And very so if it was flat, it would look the same. Yeah, very similar to the height of the existing yeah. building. Yes. Right. Yeah, we're three stories, but the Florida floor is not near what the school is. Mm -hmm. So we're only about four feet taller than the, than the school currently is. Right. So I, I just want to say this to the public that whether it's a sloped roof or a flat roof, we end up with the same height building. That's that's all. Yeah. Well, if you put a pitch roof on the entire building, you're going to go up another 12 to 15 feet on the mass on the top of that building. I do like the, the design that you came up with. The last time we met, that was one of the concerns is they talked about, you know, the flat roof versus a pitch roof. This kind of takes some of that architecture and puts that, you know, a little bit different to show a slope on there. Um, and it also will keep all the um, um, the heat pumps, the, the potential for solar panels all up, you know, hopefully out of the uh, public's eye, which I think you know, would cause an eyesore. So I applaud what you did with the with the look. I know it's not a final design, but I think it it does address some of the issues that were brought up at the last meeting that we had. So the only problem I have with that, Mark, is I don't think we have a single mansard roof building anywhere in our downtown village. Do we? I mean, it, it does it does help give a horizontal look but it's an unusual feature it is and in and like brandon said it's very difficult because there's no guidance on the historical portion yeah. so it's it's going to be one of those you know like i said i'm not an architect so but when i did look at the building i was i was pleased with the you know the design changes that i saw so far to try and incorporate some of the ideas that came out of the last meeting uh, also, I think we're trying to introduce a residential element instead of having the building just be boxy all the way to the top, the corners. And by doing that with that top floor, giving the mansard, that kind of brings the scale down, but gives more of a, a residential element to the building. Would it be reasonable? I've had a problem with this from the get-go as far as the guidelines, because they have a very nebulous, what I think is historic, is could be much different. But would it be a, a reasonable assessment to maybe get two or three models and show it to the public and let that input guide you? Or is that too much? Uh, or I mean, I mean, you can go on this ad infinitum, but that seems to me like at least people could see, they have a choice and say, well, this looks more like what I had in mind versus giving them one thing. Well, at the same time, we've, we've got to consider these projects have limited budgets and right. how much we can do and what we can do. And once you start applying a lot of detailing, especially historic type detailing, the, the costs definitely begin to go up. So we have to be careful as we do that. And, and typically, even in a, in a historic district, when you put a new building, the goal is to try to make it fit in on a uh, scale of the building so that it can well in the neighborhood. You don't try to mimic the existing style because then you begin to it, it can't differentiate between a historic building and a more historic building because you're not trying to mimic what's there. So what would your methodology be? Would you go around and look at photographs of Walterboro 50 years ago or just the town and have some idea where you're going with it or just do what you think? Well, the big thing is you, you look at the, the scale of what all the borough is and what the buildings are, right. historic buildings, and, and try to come into an existing neighborhood and not try to overwhelm that. I say, uh, you know, we don't want the building to stand out necessarily. Uh, we want to more blend in. Uh, one of the reasons we put the building facing the street, put the parking on the backside, so we didn't have that parking lot in the front of the way. Uh, the first thing we did. Uh, but that's the big thing we try to do. We try to make it from a contextual standpoint of size to have it fit in the neighborhood without overwhelming the neighborhood. Okay. 
I think you, I think it looks better than the last version that we saw. I don't have the flavor of Lady Gray, but a, a nice new plain. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. In the flag hole in the Barbara High School sign, I'm looking at that upper corner where it steps back. Could it be at an angle so it sort of salutes the uh, ballpark down, you know, kind of welcomes you to the ballpark down there as, as it possible. So it's part of the complex again. It's the ball. You can have it. The black hole is already there. I it's mean, already across the street? Yeah, there's a flag. Yeah. Look. And there. And they're for a very long time. Oh gosh. It's, it's, raising, it's raising the flag. It's not these days, but the students did. Oh, back in the day. I missed it. I, I, mean, I just um the old there's an old schoolhouse down that slope um across. I think it's a it was maintenance old. building. I'm so is it, yeah, it's, uh, it's in terrible disrepair. I don't think anyone yeah. could go inside. Industrial but wasn't it one at one yeah. time yeah. a little schoolhouse? Yeah. Is that is that on your property? No, no that would still that would stay with the town. Okay. okay. Uh, if there's no more discussion, let's uh, run through the review here so that we can uh, get to the end. <laughs> All right. Um, so conflicts of interest, I'm not aware of any. I don't see anybody raising any. Uh, does the applicant have standing? Uh, my understanding is that uh, as of now, the town has not transferred the property to you. That's It's still in the works. But the letter that was provided on Tuesday does say that the town is getting permission for Volunteers of America to proceed right now, since there could be something brought up during this process that could impact the, the agreement. Yep, makes sense to me. All right, uh, is the application complete? It is uh, fairly complete in my opinion. Uh, findings of facts, we don't have that yet. I assume you have a draft going, Max. Yep, I'll try and go through as fast as I can on this one. The Walgar Planning Board has considered the following application for 56 School Street, map U4, lot 63, including supportive data, staff review comments, public hearing testimony, and related materials contained in the record. Planning board makes the following findings of fact. The applicant has proposed demolition, demolishing the existing structure and construct a multifamily dwelling structure as defined in the Waldeboro Land Use Ordinance on page 15-9. Planning board is authorized to review the proposed use. The applicant is Volunteers of America, Northern New England, or BOA, who is represented by Walsh Engineering Associates Incorporated. The owner is the town of Waldeboro. The property is under consideration is 56 School Street. The lot has a total acreage of 2.42 acres, according to the Waldeboro's tax assessor's agents. However, this amount would be reduced to an estimated 2.06 acres. If I read your site plan correctly. Yes. The lot size will depend on negotiations by the town office and Volunteers of America. The lot is in the historic village district. The current land use is school slash municipal building, uh, abandoned. Proposed use demolished school and tennis courts, construct 36 units for senior housing. Previous permits, the site was reviewed by the Maine Historic Preservation Commission in 2021 and was informed the site would not meet requirements to be listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Last permit was a plumbing permit in 1987. Site also has registration forms for the removal of underground storage tanks. The town planner deemed the application ready for planning board review with the applicant submitting the following. One, the Town of Waldeboro Site Plan Review Cover Sheet. Two, a copy of the deed for the property. Three, a six page summary of standards for articles seven, eight, nine, and 10. Four, a land survey of the existing and proposed sites. Five, preliminary proposals, erosion control, site detail, grading, and landscaping designs. Six, a Waldeboro tax map copy, a top, top a beginning with habitat map, a FEMA floodplain map, and seven, draft architectural designs. The designs are not the final version. And then uh, just a note for the public hearing requirement. I did send out um, letters to all those who have parcel on <laughs> School Street. Uh, I I did make an error, and I also made an error with the uh, bed and breakfast for the newspaper ad. It said March 20th, I'm sorry, April 23rd uh, was going to be the meeting. I made a correction on social media on April 7th when I realized that mistake. Um, so yeah. 
that's findings of fact. Okay. Uh, so let's review 3.5.1. Uh, application's been accepted by the town office, submitted on town office forms. I don't know if that happened actually. Applicant information is all in the package. Property location and details is all in the drawings. Verification on ownership we just discussed. That is pending. Uh, I assume that fees have not been paid because the land has not been transferred. I nope, assume the fees were paid for the oh, was Okay. All right. Estimated cost of construction was uh, it says in the in the application that it's eight. Uh, in the meeting the other day, I think it was at eight point three, something like that. Don't know. That's about that. about point three per week. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, description of project is in the application. We've all just discussed it. Uh, anticipated start and completion dates. Um, I believe that the plan was to demolish the building this year and start new construction next spring. Is that right? I think so. We discussed that at the meeting uh, on Monday. We're we're working with the uh, environmental consultant on the DRAP process, which would be part of the demolition. Okay. Uh, all other state, local, and federal permits are acquired. Um, you noted that we're going to need a DEP permit. Yeah, permit by rule for stormwater storm. All right, estimated water and sewage. Off the top of my head, I don't recall that being in here. Oh, was that? It was part of our ability to serve requests. So, so I think we're all set for the sewer and we're still working with the water department on the sprinkler side. Right. All right, uh, there's no septic, so I'd say 14 is a not applicable. 3.5.1.15 was traffic proposed the vehicle and pedestrian traffic into and through the property that's shown on the plans. We already discussed the traffic impacts. All right. So for 3.5.1, um, how are we gonna how are we gonna handle all of these open items? Um, just as a max as a point of uh, procedure, um, if we want to approve this with all these pending things, we can approve this conditional on the outstanding information being provided, right? Um, what's the pending information? Uh, like we haven't heard from Maine Water about the ability to feed the sprinkler system. Right. Uh, there's going to be a DEP stormwater permit required. Right. Um, the transfer of the lot has not yet taken place. Um, so is it acceptable to approve all of these with a condition that it, uh, yes. the condition be provided? There would be a few conditions. One of them would be that uh, we're going to have to have the second meeting anyways for the final design, um, but the conditions include uh, a letter from Maine, similar to what we did with the bed and breakfast, a letter from Maine water stating um, any requirements that are necessary for servicing the area with the water. Um, transfers of ownership, the application would be approved pending uh, the transfer agreement with the town and um, other similar agreements. Those are all eligible conditions because the town's given the letter saying, we own the town owns it right now and is fine and is working on the transfer but just needs to hear from the planning board first in case right. there's anything like that so okay. those would all be conditions okay so that's 
super clear to everybody, I'm sure, at this point. <laughs> uh, so we should uh, we should have a motion here to accept 3.5.1 uh, with the conditions that uh, 3.1.5, 3.5.1, Three point one point twelve will uh, be satisfied by a subsequent submittal from the applicant. Do you have? You're just going through the book. We don't have a, one that they've provided. No, they didn't. Experience. They did not detail that. So I'm just going through the. Okay. No, I do have it for seven, eight, nine, and ten, and I'm getting those printed now. Okay. I, rem I remember I sent that, but I just never printed it out. Okay. So I'm getting that too. Yeah. Um, I have to hear what the exceptions are. Yeah. Okay, uh, 3.1, sorry, 3.5.1.5, the verification on ownership. Um, after the lot is transferred, that information would be provided. That would be a condition. Uh, next condition would be 3.5.1.10, the DEP stormwater permit. And uh, 3.5.1.12, uh, we have not heard back from Maine Water to confirm that they can... Uh, provide enough water to uh, feed the sprinkler system. Okay, we got this 2,400 gallons per day, but um, so that's another level, another question. So do we have a motion to accept that with those three conditions? Yeah, I'll move to accept with those conditions on uh, item 5, 10, and 12 regarding water. Is there a second? Second that. I second it. Yep. Okay. Your discussion? Can you repeat Just, the um, person who made the motion in the second? Uh, yes. Uh, Jeff moved. Barbara seconded. Any discussion? Just briefly, this does not yes. cover the um, uh, the other articles, correct? It's just the ones that you just talked about. Yes, exactly. We're just on 3.5.1. Good. Yep, I'm yep. good. Uh, all those in favor? Mark's hand is up. Great. May I ask just one question? Yes. Um, what's your expected date if everything goes according to the way it might be? Um, from the start of construction until the finished building, how much time is that? Roughly. Uh, Everything seems to be about 12 months. This is almost seven, eight, nine. From the beginning of the building. Well, that's not bad. Uh, just remember the building demolition is a separate project. Yes. But once you start that, it'll yeah. be about a year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I like the design. Okay, section 3.5.2, documents for planning board review. I'm not gonna open them up here because we have a small table. Um, the documents are supposed to have a title block and the names of the engineers, so, place for us to sign off. Would you just be signing one site plan? We would sign off on each of them. So what's gonna happen oh, is, yeah, so what it's what we used to do where um, whatever's approved tonight, with the conditions of approval that are going to be done, they'll be placed on the final site maps. And then usually it's one cop, um, depends how many maps you guys want to make, but usually what will happen is you'll all sign one and then I'll just get a copy and give it to them. So usually it's just one signature, but we wouldn't do that until next month or next meeting. Next week? Next meeting. Next meeting. Yeah. It's like the bed and breakfast. I'm going to have to update their site plan so that includes those conditions or the findings of fact. Okay, item six, building and structure drawings. Um, we have a set of civil drawings. Uh, there's a landscape drawing, erosion control drawing, 
Um, yeah, and then we have the renderings of the building. Um, item seven, estimated peak hour of traffic. We already discussed that. There's not enough, uh, not enough trips. That one's uh, not applicable. Stormwater and erosion control plans. Both of those are included in the drawings. Technical and financial capacity. Um, I don't think we need to worry about that at this point uh, because I assume you haven't raised the money for the building yet. So it's. Uh, well, BOA is working on a, a right. letter from the bank. They just haven't gotten it yet. So as soon as we, they get that, they'll provide it to the town. Great. Mm -hmm. Uh, contour lines on the map that is there. Uh, the fire protection provisions on this one 3.5.2.12. This says per ordinance requirements. Yes. Um, and we have a letter from the police uh, fire chief on this one too, should I believe. Be, should be, I believe, the last page in that four pages that I gave you. Yes, yeah, um, there it is. I can quickly read that if you want. The Go recommendations ahead. were 7.12.1. Chief would appreciate a condition of approval that the developer will install a hydrant based on his rec based on the fire chief's recommendation recommendation so the site can be sufficiently serviced in the event of a fire. Uh, and then item 7.12.2, the fire chief would want a condition of approval for a lockbox to be installed based on his recommend based on the fire chief's recommendation so that there is immediate access to the multifamily structure, and there is no additional thoughts from the fire chief. Okay. So approving 3.5.2. Uh, I think we have a not applicable for item seven, the estimated peak hour of traffic and um, condition for 3.5.2.10 and 3.5.2.12. Um, for 10, the condition is we would like to receive a letter from the bank on the financial capacity. And on 12, uh, the conditions would be to include the uh, request from the fire chief per his letter dated. There's no, there's no date. There's uh, no date. <laughs> have, you, have you received this letter from the I fire don't, chief? I don't think I've seen okay. That. asking for a hydrant a yeah hydrant. yeah one well i don't know if it's going to be an additional hydrant but he would like to be sure that there's a hydrant that's close enough in case oh, there's a fire because there's it's about 50 feet away yeah one just down the street there's one yeah the next house down but on the opposite side of the street um plus there'll be the, the fire department connection on the yeah yeah so so, so I, I think you know it, talking to uh, Chief Smeltzer, he he wanted to make sure that of the hydrant location as well to feed the building, that it didn't impede his fire trucks in the in the event of uh, a fire, and depending on where what hydrant he uses would impede the entrance. So um, he basically wanted to leave it so that there was a hydrant that was added. You're going to be running an eight inch main into the building anyways for the sprinkler system. So basically you're dropping a T and one hydrant off there um, in order to feed his, uh, his sprinkler. Well, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. So he's looking for another hydrant like a hundred feet away from the, the existing one. I believe so. I, I don't know if Max has had more conversations yeah. with him. But it would be we to can, his satisfaction. We, we can work with him to figure out where, where he'd like that hydrant. Okay. Um, there's no other discussion on 3.5.2. Uh, is there a motion to accept the application? with uh, item seven being not applicable 
and the conditions for items 10 and 12. I motion to approve uh, 3.5.2 based on those conditions. Or second that. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? All right. I see Mark's hand up. Five to zero. Article seven. All right. Buffer areas. Uh, so it, this is uh, additional information. Um, 7.1, it says proposed development will provide sufficient site screening utilizing landscape buffer areas, refer to landscape plan for further information. Uh, a six foot tall stockade fence is to be provided in conjunction with the plantings to provide screening for budding properties. Okay. And this would be the condition, this would probably be the condition that uh, Mark Hallowell just mentioned before he left where he would just want to guarantee that there is going to be that at least six foot high fence. Mark Hallowell was the guy sitting on the back. Left early. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't catch the two property items that he said, but um, it would be then you're right. Yeah, he's he's referring to the the other gentleman lives in where the old building custodian used to live in the back, the back of the park. He was referring to the second house, not just also. And he, what's that? McLean's yes, place. McLean Place. Yeah, Freddie's Place. So it would be a condition for the fence and landscaping to go along um, the southern border of the property. And that's that's what's shown on the drawings now. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, construction standard 7.2. Can I ask one quick question yeah. related to the buffer? Yeah. I'm on the other side. Did I? It doesn't show it on that one, but it looked like the one of the other drawings. There was a line of trees on the north side. Is that act? Was that accurate? Because um, it doesn't show it there, but it seems maybe I maybe I dreamt it. What are those other ones that, that that flashed up on the screen? I thought that was the, the problem with that north side is it's very shallow. Ah, uh, right, right. There's a whole ton of ledge there. Okay, maybe it was just the. Uh, I don't know. There's a. Uh, Is the ledge the reason why uh, the generator got located by the entrance instead of on the back yeah, side of the building? Was, I generally put those where the electric service is coming in. Right. And the landscape architect said, that's really done. <laughs> and they said, well, I don't know where else to put it. So we're actually discussing where we can put it, where it was out on the other end of the building by the dumpster and uh, shed. Uh, is one option or on the corner of the parking lot. Um, I mean, we're very aware of the, you know, those things exercise play once a week. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so there, it's going to run once in a while yeah. for no reason. Our power grid in town in the village is extremely delicate and it goes out all the time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, putting it right next to the butter seemed like a, seemed like a, a bad choice. Yeah. Yes, but it was where the entrance was. So, um, you know, we, we know we're going to have to run secondary all the way through the building to do that to the other end, but we're seriously yeah. considering that. So you had mentioned earlier uh, that the power is coming into, uh, I guess, what would be the, what's that, the southwest corner of the building? There's, there's an existing pole right here. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, it's right right there. And so we'd be looking to drop down and go underground into the building to yeah. service. So we may end up with the, the transformer there. Um, we haven't gotten any word from CMP on how they want to do it. But um, you're going to have a pad mount transformer of some kind, though. Probably. Yeah. I mean, they could do it. This is an um, aerial wire, so they could do, you know, cans on a pole, but just two cans. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. So, um, this is the way we think it's going to go. Transformer and generator. Okay. Okay.
Uh, let's see. We're on construction codes. I'm sure that everybody will comply with the codes. Construction standards. Construction standards. Yeah. So we're on 7.2. Uh, electrical disturbances at 7.3. I don't think that we are expecting a lot of EMF coming off of this project. I don't think that's an issue. Uh, uh, the historic village district architectural standards is 7.4, which, as we've discussed, is a little a little vague at this point. Um, seven. You can put together a brief letter and send it. I mean, a brief letter. Thoughts rather than what's meant. If it's an evolving thing, would that be helpful from the board? Yeah. <laughs> Some guidance. We're trying to build consensus. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Like, yeah, that's yeah, tough. We discussed uh, we discussed this at a previous board meeting, and we struggled to come up with consensus between the five of us, and that's why you haven't heard anything from this <laughs> yet. All right, uh, net developable net developable acreage calculation in seven point five. Um, is that in the document somewhere? That's, I didn't go looking in for the same it. Plan sheet, okay, along with the um, previous cover. Yeah, which I know is absurd. Yes. All right. Uh, seven point six noise. I don't see any real noise concerns from the building. Um, you're gonna have heat pumps running on the roof, forty feet up. I yeah. don't see that being an issue. I just got one of those. So it's there with the quiet. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Seven point seven is lighting. Um, I admit I didn't spend a lot of time looking at it, but you do have a light, uh, a lighting impact drawing in the yep. in the uh, documents. Levels, try to keep the um, light off of the neighbor's property and on the parking lot. So. Excellent. Uh, 7.8 is refuse disposal. Uh, you have a dumpster and an enclosure shown on the drawings. Um, which I think, uh, Big enough for two, two cans so they can have recycled. Great. Sanitary provisions. I uh, believe that we're all set on that. We have a letter from sewer district in this package, right? That's the third page of the yep. one I gave. Great. All right, 7.10 signs. Um, I don't recall seeing a sign for the building in there aside from the Waldenboro High School sign. Yeah, we, we don't have a yeah, sign. We don't, yeah, we don't have a sign. Yeah, okay. You don't have a sign anymore, did you say? At this point, we don't have and, st and Stan but, would be required to fill out right. the sign permit. But when you come with the with additional architectural, you'll show something. <laughs> Some of them may do. I'm just curious where you're going to put it. If it's going to be on the building, yeah, if it's standing. Right there, the location. It would probably be at the corner right there by the office. Where, that, where the columns are, um, that entrance door. Yeah. <clears throat> and then there's a historical plaque inside the building, right? Not anymore. Oh. No, well, that no, that's it's not bad news. Uh, the historical side, you already grabbed it. Oh, okay. Grab them. Uh, Billy, uh, Billy Maxwell called me when he saw my quote in the paper. Okay. Great <laughs> me up. I wasn't sure if it could be put in a plexiglass thing. No, no, they've already got it. Okay. Uh, Bob, uh, Bob has a oh, yeah. Uh, question concerning, concerning the lighting. Do you take night sky into account when you install it? So, yes, you're not going to blind everybody. In the no, these are all full cutoff LED fixtures. Okay. Yeah. And will you rescue the cornerstone when you tear it down? Well, they used to I wouldn't know there was one there, but yeah. I'm told there is. Okay. Um, and the historical society would love to have it with you if you find it. Okay, there might be some interesting things inside. I guess all oh, the time capsule. The time, time capsule. Oh, yeah. yeah. Probably enough. Yeah, probably yeah, about after the demo. Yeah, we can we can make a note of that in the demo project. Right. 
Thank you. Do it. Does anybody know where it is? Uh, Billy Maxwell gave me yeah. a book that says where it should be, so I'll make sure that's passed along to Brian. Um, there was there was one uh, question on the lighting. Um, was there going to be any exterior lights that are going to be facing out towards Philbrook Lane and School Street? There'll be a light at the door. There'll be a light at the door, but it's not. It's going to be shielded and pointed downwards. It's going to be inside the canopy, just the down Okay. Nothing on the face of the building. Okay. Okay. Um, 7.11 storage of materials. Um, this is all uh, pretty straightforward. It refers to the dumpsters, uh, which are going to be on pavement inside of an enclosure, uh, which seems to meet the requirements. 7.12 is emergency services. Um, <laughs> as we noted earlier, uh, the water supply has still not been confirmed by uh, main water. So that is pending. And uh, 7.13 is archaeological historic sites. Um, I assume not, but uh, you haven't contacted the uh, main <laughs> historic preservation yes, site. Oh, we you did. They said we're all set. Fantastic. That's in the um, oh, is it in? So. Is it in the? It might be in the main. A lot of documents to uh, yeah. keep track of at the same time. Like, bury you in paper. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the idea, uh, right? I I may have misspoken, but um, let me check on that. Okay? Yeah, we we normally do. I read it somewhere. Okay. And if not, that's just a simple condition that they'll send the letter to me. Yep. Okay. So, um, 7.12 is pending. We seem to have a satisfactory response on, uh, the rest of this. So I think to close out Article 7, we just need a motion to uh, accept as submitted with a condition for 7.12 that uh, the letter from Maine Water will be provided. Um, it would also, there. I think there would also be two more conditions, one for 7.1 because of the, the, the fence that we were talking about for Mark Howell. That would just be a condition, and then the other one for 7.4 for them to come back when there's the final design. Okay. Uh, the fence is shown on the drawings. There isn't a detail on it for exactly what that fence is going to be. It's a stockade yeah, I think fence. It calls it as a six foot stockade. It does, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So three conditions 7.1 for the fence, 7.4 for the uh, architectural standards and uh, 7.12 for the main water capacity letter. We have a motion. Main water capacity water. Yes. Yeah, main water, hasn't, main water hasn't responded yet to confirm that they can supply enough water for the spring. Yeah, emergency yeah. services has two items. One is, is there enough water to treat the area? And the second one is um, the lockbox. So we need main water to confirm that there's enough water to service the area. And also the potential of the hydrant as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, Mark, we covered that hydrant in 3.5.2 as a condition, uh, 3.5.2.12. Yeah, and I'll list off all the conditions when we're done going through whether the application is complete. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So do you want a motion? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is going to be quite a list at the end of the yeah. thing here. It's a big project. 
So um, I motion that we accept Article 7 with the um, exceptions and the notes as um, Brendan just stated. Is there a second? No, I'll second that. Yeah. Barbara made the motion, Jeff made the second. Further discussion? On discussion. All in favor? Five. All right. Article eight, environmental standards. Uh, eight point one is stormwater. We have a uh, robust stormwater infiltration system in the plans. The uh, the calculations in the plans show that the peak runoff rates are going to be less than or equal to the pre-development rates for two 10 and 25 year storms. Uh, the details on that are in the application. Um, Is that because of the additional property, the tennis court property? Is that how that works out? I was actually I surprised we needed to do detention because we're taking out that tennis court, but it's it's a timing issue um, because our analysis point is down at the corner of the tennis court. And so that water was gone and anyway. That's how the numbers work. So I do want to point out it's it's not an infiltration system. We normally do that, but we figured with a shell it again up the water just hits the rock and ends up coming out somewhere. So we're better off just keeping it on the surface. What do you mean you're better off keeping it on the side? Well, if, if we try to get the water down into the ground and it goes on, it it's, it's going to hit the ledge, which is fairly close. It tends to short circuit somewhere and come out. So we figured we wouldn't do the infiltration on this, which we do sometimes. So it's just straight detention. It's just the water backs up and the tanks under the ground and then it gets let out slowly. And the roof drains hmm. with internal drains? They're going to go into that system, yes. And there was a resident who wanted to confirm that the water runoff isn't going to go onto School Street and Philbrook Lane. It was going to go to the tennis courts. It is primarily, there is a little bit going to School Street and, and uh, away from the site, but the majority of it goes towards where the tennis courts are and out into that street. It's basically just the, the driveway into the parking lot that's going to drain to School Street. It's, yeah, as the I front remember. yard, so along Billbrook and the northwest corner and the north side kind of go off the property, but there's really not much there. Everything that's paved plus the building ends up going through our system. Okay. All right, erosion control. Uh, there is an erosion control plan in the documents. 8.3, groundwater impacts. That is a not applicable because it is going to be connected to municipal sewer and water. 8.4 is water quality impacts. Uh, the application says proposed development will have no negative impact on surrounding groundwater quality. Uh, no above or below ground storage tanks that could potentially contaminate groundwater supply are proposed. So I have a question about the contaminated soils, and this seems like a good time to bring it up. Uh, I was not aware that there were contaminated soils on the site. So that was, yeah, it's part of the, I believe that's correct, which is why we're doing a B wrap. That's, yeah. that's what you have to do is when you have contaminated soils, you, you can't take them anywhere else. I, I've dealt with contaminated soils on projects whenever in the state of Maine, so I don't I don't know how what the V wrap program is yeah, I, or what it's part of. Yeah, we just did with um, and so it was, um, if you're familiar with Kennebunk, it was the old, uh, Highway rest stop on Route One, and the town took it over. And snow got in there for years, and our client was looking at it for him. And so they did some analysis of some of the soils that are contaminated. So we just had to keep those soils on the property. So is this just old lead paint from the old church, or is there something? Yeah, you, you don't know what it is, or well, it's it's in the report. I'm not that familiar with the report. Um, I'm just. 
Yeah, we're, not sure what, we're not sure what the source of it was. Yeah, there's lead there, but there's not a tremendous amount of paint in the building. So why? Yeah, a brick building, it's surprising that there's lead in the soil yeah. around the building. So lead is the the part only contaminant? Part of it, yeah. Yeah, from Do what you? I've seen it is, I don't know, I don't know fully what the report says, but I know lead was one of the items that was identified in the soil around the building. Okay. Um, I'm just surprised that this is a, a concern because I didn't see anything about it in the application and maybe this was dealt with previously. Um, do you have a test report with a bunch yeah, of samples and a T clip a, on on everything? It's a phase two environmental report. Yeah. That I believe the town has. Okay. It's, was it done for the town or it was done by like, yes. DOA? So that study was done years ago, I think, before even DOA got into the okay. OHR. That was just to confirm if there was still lead, asbestos, whatever in the building so that the town could then sell it with that knowledge. And uh, that was done by Ransom Consulting through a partnership with the uh, Lincoln County Regional Planning Office. And with those results, we were able to get, I believe, community development block grant funds, okay. which will treat the site first and then the demolition will happen. If all that makes sense. Mm. But yeah, okay. there is a phase two report that we have in the back office and Ransom, I believe, is working with BOA on the project. With me. With me. <laughs> okay. So if you have contaminants in the soil after you've done the demolition, and then the runoff. How do you how do you know where that stuff goes? We, we put true? it we put it in places where we can bury it and cover it and encapsulate it essentially. But you, you don't you don't. But that way we it. know where it is. It's not hurting anything. And that's the idea. So the current school is three or four feet below grade. But is this building going to be on a crawl space or a slab on grade? Or I mean, what happens to that space that was? There? That that space will get filled. By bricks or by dirt, structural dirt, dirt brought from elsewhere. Right. So it would not be this material we were just talking about. It'd be other material. We would take whatever was excavated, bring it around, most likely to the uh, east side of the parking lot, and, and just build out that slope. I was looking at some of your elevations. I'm surprised that you don't have a, a basement in here. Are you going to have an, uh, an underground mechanical vault or something? No, it's, it's, it's very shallow to glitch. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Oh, uh, Ben's has his hand up. Oh, yeah. Just, so I'm just curious about this having been in that building. So is any of the demo? Helping to fill that hole where the gym is. Or is that how does that how does that work? Uh, no, <clears throat> they'll they'll clear all that material out of it. You can't put that underneath. Like, uh, we're gonna have to do some clean structural fill and attack the to the level. I say the building. Right. Okay. I <laughs> Where were we? Um, it was either water quality or soils. I think water quality, you were talking about how there's no, because we do have the letter verifying that there's no underground right. oil tanks. Right. Okay. And phosphorus control wouldn't be applicable since they're not in a uh, great pond watershed. Okay. That all makes sense to me. All right. 8.6 soils. Uh, if we're sitting on ledge, I don't think we have any severe or very severe soils. Uh, air and water pollution. I don't believe we have any real risks there. Um, the demolition. Um, how do you how do you do that, uh, Max? You, does the town issue a demolition permit? I don't think we issue demolition permits anymore. Okay. I'd have to check with Stan. But I I think whenever someone wants to do a demolition project, usually what they do is they sign that on the building permit. I'm going to demolish this house and then put another house on it. So it's always clarified in that. Mm -hmm. And that's usually requested so that um, if there's like a setback issue, the individual can know, you know, this building has always been here. It's always 
broken that setback requirement. So I'm just going to demolish it and build on that same footprint. Okay. I think the same would have to happen with this case. Yeah. I'm just thinking about uh, the mess from demolishing a building like this, you know, I mean, when you don't have a demolition permit, uh, you know, you don't necessarily see a demolition plan about how all that work is going to happen. All right. Uh, 8.8 set it cultural and natural values. I don't think we have any issues with that. The beginning for habitat maps are uh, in the application. 2.9 is the flood zone, certainly outside of the flood zone at the top of the hill. 8.10, river stream, brook, and wetlands. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head if there was a wetlands map in here, we need wetland mapping, but we're really not going beyond the limits of the, the tennis court. And the natural habitat. Yeah, I can't imagine. There, there's clearly some there. wetlands off to the right, right. Like east and, and northeast. Yeah, yeah, but not on this site. No, I, I believe the closest wetlands are just beyond the tennis court property, actually. Yeah. Okay. Now, the point when the uh, park proposal was being made that the wetlands were so close by. Mm -hmm. but it's not like um i don't believe it's uh beginning with habitat like my hands right yeah there. Right. okay uh 8.11 buffer for water quality this is one is not applicable for the application that is the end of section eight So the motion would be to determine Article 8's complete with 8.3, 8.5, and 8.11 being not applicable. Okay. Yep. Is there a motion? I motion that we accept Article 8 with 8.3, 8.5, 8.7 being not applicable. Uh, 8.11. 8.7 is uh, still applicable. What? Uh, you said 8.7. It's 8.3, 8.5, and 8.11. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yep. Barbara made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. I heard Johnny first. Sorry, Mark. Works for me. Any further discussion? All in favor? Five oh, it's five. Y. All right. Article nine, parking and traffic. Nine point one, traffic impact analysis. We talked about this earlier because there's less than fifty space. For this impact analysis is not required. Uh, nine point two, street access, driveways, and street and road construction standards. The application says. No new street and road construction is necessary for the project. Development will utilize both the existing street system along with the existing parking lot. Multiple traffic and pedestrian control measures are proposed within the parking lot to promote safe and convenient circulation. Please refer to the site plan. Um, 9.3. I think for 9.2, I don't think we have any uh, real issues with the details in the configuration of the parking lot. Um, I'll on two strings. Yeah. Um, so 9.3 is parking and loading. And the application says ample parking for development's been provided Town of Waldborough requires one parking space per dwelling unit. So we have 36 units with 33 spaces provided. Although this does not meet the one-to-one -one requirement, VOA maintains several other similar facilities and has found over time, these facilities never exceed the allotted parking provided. WEA believes three, <coughs> sorry, 33 spaces provides ample space for the residents and visitors. Ben, do you have your hand up? I just had one question for these gentlemen and then a comment. Um, do you have staff that are there day by day? Yeah. No, no. 
there, there's I think somebody once in a while yeah. answers that question, but yeah, I, I don't know if there was somebody good. there daily or not. I'm yeah, pretty sure the answer I got back from Brian was no, that they don't have okay. people there on so a regular basis. I just don't understand what you're expecting that at least three residents would have no none of their own transportation. This is what we're finding in these facilities is you build these parking lots and they're like a third full. Because I my parents are in one and they have a vehicle and I'm coming to visit. So it just it, to me it's strange credibility to say that you wouldn't have one to at least one to one. I, I don't I just don't understand. I mean you guys know what you're doing, but I just it doesn't make any sense to me. Well, what we've, we've, what we've found uh, is that uh, <clears throat> most towns ordinances that we follow, it's one for one. And almost all their facilities, the utilization rates usually less than 50%. Oh, that would be Any given day that you go to the parking lot, it's more than half empty. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to stop the project. <laughs> I just don't understand. Bob? Yeah, you get old people in these, in these facilities and they don't drive. And I visited the one in Thomaston and I had no problem. Fighting a party. And that's, that's not what that's not 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 that's that could be a condition we're allowed at this time, but it, in a future date, if if that parking is deemed, um, you know, unacceptable or uh, there's overflow, that they they would have to expand that. So I think that might be advisable. So would it, would we want to have a little bit of a sort of preliminary plan for additional cases if needed, you know, with with the design of the drainage and all that business, whatever tanks might be there could get in the way of that uh, down the road. Yeah, the only way we could add parking is to move the uh, dumpster and shed closer to the north property line. And I think we can get two more in there without getting across the setback. But I, I don't know if we're gonna get the 36. But we, can, you know, we can also provide some uh, information on the other facilities that they have. Maybe yeah. because and you do phrase it as over time. So over time as people get older while they're yeah. big in these apartments, the car's gonna go. So the board could also just make a condition that the parking requirement can be addressed at a future meeting or a parking plan is proposed at a future meeting. Although I don't know how many conditions you want to make on that. Yeah, there's yeah. It has a lot of cascading effects, you know, yeah. if we suddenly, uh, you know, years down the road decide we want to add three parking spaces. Now you've got more impervious area, which affects all of your stormwater calculations and and all I, of that. I have to design it in as you were suggesting. Yeah. Um, and that, that's my point is I think we can add two. Well, if that's our, you know, worst case scenario that we're one spot short, I don't see that as really being an obstacle to approving this. No, that that would be fine to me. I guess the question is whether we modify the plan to add those two spaces. I think the storm. Well, we've run it, yeah, we've run into this before with the with the dollars from the dollar store. Um, the town had a requirement for so much parking. Um, and they didn't want that much parking. And when you drive by the dollar store, it always looks like nobody's there. It right. looks like you get a big parking lot with nobody there and it doesn't look good on for their business even. Okay. And so they didn't want it, but the town made them and having this be a big empty parking lot is, you know, I, I, why expand the pavement if you don't need it? But, um, no, well, the village might there. want it. Huh? The village might like it. Well, I, was, I was thinking of that. <laughs> Maybe. So Maybe. Make a deal with the neighbors. Right. Not yet. Um, so what do we do with that? So that would be uh, that would be 
we have to waive 9.3 in its entirety, right? Because we can't do a variance on the number of parking spaces. We can only do a variance on dimensional items. Right. So we would have to waive 9.3 and approve it with a condition that no less than 33 parking spaces are being provided. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve Article 9 with a waiver for 9.3 and a condition to provide no less than 33 parking spaces for the facility? Move to accept Article 9. Uh, point 1 is uh, not applicable. and. Point three is a waiver with a condition for uh, 33 spaces. Jeff made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Mark made the second. Is there further discussion? All in favor? See. All right. That's and Mark five. has his hand up over there. All right. Section 10.18. 10 10.8 or 10.18? 18, 18 I'm, I messed up on that title. Gotcha. So it's not multifamily dwellings. It is water supply. Yeah. Well, the section should be about multifamily dwellings. 10.18.1 should be the water supply. How many typos did I do tonight? <laughs> no, they have it. I think you meant. Yeah, they have it right on this. 10.18.1 is 10.18 is overall the multifamily dwellings, and then 18.1, oh, 18.2. No, it's kind of like how the last one had. 10 points something for bed and breakfast. Got it. Okay. So 10.18, water supply, as we've discussed, this is still pending main water. So we will need a condition on that. 10.18.2, sewage disposal. We have the letter from the utility districts accepting the additional volume. 10.18.3, rubbish, snow removal, and maintenance. It's the responsibility of the owner to provide for all that. And the application states, <laughs> trash from the facility will be stored in on-site dumpsters and removed periodically via trash hauling company. Snow removal will be contracted to local plowing company. Um, there is no requirement to provide any further information on that, so that seems acceptable to me. 10.18.4, stormwater and drainage. As we've discussed, that's all been handled in the plans. 10.18.5, multiple street access. Ordinance says all developments containing 15 or more dwelling units may be required by the planning board to have more than one street access for emergency and safety. No more than two accesses shall be allowed on any single street or roadway. The response in the application is WEA understands developments containing more than 15 dwelling units may be required uh, to maintain more than one street access. We look forward to this discussion. Um, I guess, um, Mark, if you're still on there, doesn't look, I think we lost Mark. Um, I'm here. Okay. Uh, as our uh, resident emergency services expert, um, why would we want an additional entrance to this parking lot for uh, emergency services? Uh, the only thing that I can think of on this, on this would be for access for um fire apparatus to certain sides of the building 
but I really don't see that being a problem because the ladder truck would have access to four sides of the building. Um, so having a, another access point um, really would be a mood point. I think it would be if the fire chief was, you know, adamant about it, it, it might be different, but from, from the standpoint of, of access with fire trucks and, and the ladder for rescue purposes, um, they're going to meet that. They, they'll be access for the ladder truck on, on four sides. So. Okay. I don't think that that's something that we necessarily need to be concerned with. If the, uh, the chief has already looked at it and there's no reason to add it. If we can uh, stand pat with the one entrance. 10.18.6 is the next item, recreation and open space. Um, all multifamily developments of 15 units or more shall so provide a developed play area no smaller than 5,000 square feet. And uh, the response is that the area where the tennis courts is currently located is going to be uh, turned into a outdoor rec space for the residents of the facility, which seems to meet the standard there. So, um, I think we have, uh, again, a condition on the water supply pending the response from main water. And otherwise the application has met the requirements for 10.18. Does that make sense to everybody? Is 10.18.5 not applicable? Is that how that's marked? That was, uh, you would make, vegetables? if you wanted, yeah, if you wanted to have the street, uh, you would make it a condition similar to how under 7.1, the language is the planning board may require. And so that's just a condition that we have. So for this one, if you don't think another street is necessary, you just wouldn't do anything. Okay. So we have a motion to accept 10.18 uh, with the condition uh, that we will uh, get the confirmation from Maine Water. Yep. <laughs> I'm so glad. Barbara made the motion. Is there a second? No second. Yeah, I made the second. All right. Discussion? All those in favor? Five oh. All right. We made it to the end. Well, just the final approval. <laughs> I'll I'll read the motion and then uh, just the final vote. So the motion would be to, if I understand it, accept the application as presented with the following conditions. Can I, before you say that, we didn't really have a place for when we went through it for. You mentioned moving the generator and the um, transformer, but we didn't really have a place for it in these lists for that. But we we'll just expect that you'll be able to work it out on the next site plan. Yeah. Are you signing the site plan today? No, not tonight. Okay. I have something else for you to sign after this. <laughs> so the condition, so the uh, proposal is to approve the application as presented with the following conditions. One, a letter from uh, their financial institution to verify the financial capacity. Two, a letter from the water district that the site can be properly serviced or if any upgrades are necessary. Three, a fire hydrant will be installed at the developer's expense based on the fire chief recommendation. Five, or no, I'm sorry, four, a lockbox will be installed at the developer's expense based on the fire chief recommendation. Five, a six foot high fence will be built along the Southern boundary of the property with landscaping uh, to provide sufficient screening when a fence is not possible. Cause you said that the entire Southern area couldn't be a fence, right? I do not believe so, yeah. Okay. So we can take a closer look at that, but I, I think that the, the way it drops down. Just to the edge of the parking lot. Right. Right. Six, the applicant will return to the planning board to present final designs for the structure 
that will comply with section 7.4 as determined by the planning board. Seven, at least 33 parking spaces must be provided for the proposed 36 units. Just to specify that in case there's more units down the line somehow. Yeah. And those are all the conditions I have. Okay. We have a motion to accept the application with the conditions as noted by Max. I'll move to accept the application as uh, with conditions as stated. I'll second it. Jeff made the motion. Mark made the second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? No. Thank you very much. Sorry, I didn't ask you guys to sit down. I feel bad you stood there. Sit down all the So I will email you about next steps. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'll keep anybody later, but I think it would be good to have another public meeting. Another forum. It was a stellar job for this. Yeah. But I only found out about Monday by accident. I will send out and letters. The fact that folks didn't know it. I couldn't come anyway, but the neighbors I'll, should be able to come to that. Especially because of the design being the big focus, I'll make sure that that actually gets letters in the mail this yeah, time. No, the letter was great, both this, because I put that right up. There, were, there was a turnout for the, the six o'clock meeting. Yeah. I was online, so I couldn't see everybody, but it no. seemed like there was at least a half a dozen people here. And the recording is also on the town's uh, YouTube page if there's anyone interested. But yeah, I'll I'll talk with Julie. I'll talk with Brian, and we'll get the form. You, I think the twenty fourth is what we're going to do. But I'll make sure that there's letters going to everyone on School Street. Thank you. And thank you all. Thank, thank you. you very much. Oh. One question regarding people to do yeah. work that I can't do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hours are not listed on our paper from the PDF. Because the major concern, you know what, that's. I don't know if this is something we want to keep doing with the planning board because I also need you guys to sign some stuff right after the meeting. Yeah. But do you want me to continue this now or should we close out? Well, we can close out because I don't want to hold you guys here. All oh, we need to adjourn the meeting, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Forgot about that. If it, it's all right, just yeah. we'll adjourn the meeting and then I can address yes, it. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we're all eager to leave. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stayed away. Oh, well done. Thank you. And I appreciated your comments on the Monday. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I like that. It's surprising how many people ask the same question. I know, but and I used your line twice. So okay. Going into um, Hannah, yeah, yeah. Uh, twice. <laughs> I, I thought that might sell. It, it, it did. It yeah. did. Good. All right. Um, we move we adjourn. Long meeting. Johnny, <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> moving to adjourn. Yes, adjourn. All right. I I'll second that. And All in favor. Yeah. Yeah. Both of you. Max, have you ever done?